Where's one? <laughs> so that's Real daddy. that's mine. Okay. I remember it took a a, a second. Or okay. Two. Okay, so that mine's live, and then yours. Let's see, it should be there. It is. Let's All right, go. let's live. go. Finally, it Finally. <laughs> we're Finally. having some troubles with connection, but we're yeah, good to go. We had some technical difficulties, <laughs> and most of the technical difficulty is like that. What did they say? They said most technical problems happen be between the keyboard and the chair. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so it was your fault. <laughs> yeah, we were fucking it up. But it's All right, that. so we're good. We made it eventually. Yeah, we did it. Let's do it. CBL Daddy. AK, AK is, is the, best. the best. Thanks, brother. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Yeah, let's go. Um, I'm going to share this too on Facebook, at least so people know that we're yeah, too. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, yeah, so hope everyone's having a good day. My name is Andrew. My name is AK. And today, what's the topic, AK? Today, we're going to be giving you a full guide, step-by-step, on everything you need to know and plan to move to Medellin, hopefully next year. Yep, hopefully next year. Yeah. Hopefully uh, for 2024. So obviously a lot of things will change. Like, for example, the minimum wage is going to change here. Okay. Um, I'm sure some tax codes will be updated. Like every year something happens. So um, we'll we'll be touching on that, yeah. on the changes that are uh, presumed to be happening this yeah. coming year. Um, but it's really fun to talk about and plan right like i i don't know do you do that often where you plan like what you're gonna do for the next year like you do your resolution you want me to tell you something crazy my whole channel is about teaching people how to move to medellin and plan stuff (laughs) before you get here but i personally whenever i visit visit a new country i don't plan anything Um, just because i like to arrive there and see oh my god what's going on and just kind of figure it out like that culture shock, I like the culture yeah. shock and figuring it out as I go. So, yeah. for example, I'm going to Bolivia in on Monday. Really? And my girlfriend is like, let's plan this, let's plan that. I'm like, plan whatever you want. Just tell me where to go. I don't want to know because I want to get there. I don't want to look at photos right. and stuff. I just want to be my first experience to be my first experience. Right? right, right. So, But most people are not like me. So, yeah, it's good to plan. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely good to plan. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm more of a planner, I would say. Yeah. I, I like to plan, but not like every single thing mm-hmm. like if i'm going to do a trip like for example if i were going to bolivia yeah i would definitely be planning like where i'm gonna stay obviously but also like i like to go to museums okay. i like to do like walking tours so i would plan that out i would be like okay we definitely have to do the bike tour or whatever yeah on wednesday yeah type stuff yeah so that that definitely um that definitely helps yeah it, help, yeah. it, help, it helps when you're but when you're going to make a big move, like moving to Oh, then you have Medellin, to. Absolutely. You yeah. should be planning yeah. because it, it'll get hard if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, I kind of just figured it out as I came. But if yeah. I planned and actually knew, okay, I want to move to this place. I want to get this visa. I want to join these groups. It would have yeah. gone a lot more smoothly right. rather than how it went, which uh, was, yeah, ended up well in the end. But yeah, is what it is, it right? ends up. I mean, it is what it is. I, sometimes wigging it is the most fun. <laughs> uh, what's up, Jonathan? How's it going? Hope yeah. you're having a good day. Feliz Navidad. Uh, Glenn, how you doing? Hola, amigos. Hey, Marvelous 16, CBL Daddy, 69 Way Better. Everybody's in the house. Everybody's um, in the house. Hey, before we get to talking about next year, yeah, I want to talk about this year. Yeah, let's talk about this year. I want to ask you guys in the videos to leave a comment and uh, let's say what is your biggest achievement or what are you most proud of that you did in 2023? Can be something very small, can be something very big, but show yourself some yeah. love right now by saying what you did awesome in 2023. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, yeah, can you give me three things three in things. 2023 oh that you're very happy that you did or proud of yourself um, for doing? Number one, I impregnated my girlfriend. So that's, <laughs> okay. that's the one that well done. I'm most proud of. Well so done, Andrew. Andrew is going to be a father for the first time. <laughs> first, first time, right? Uh, known time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> for the first known time. I used to turn time. my phone off during Father's Day. Okay. I don't want those uh, surprise <laughs> calls. <laughs> and how do you feel about that? Uh, I feel great, man. I'm. I can't believe that I'm gonna have a kid. I think it's um, it's super exciting. It's gonna be super fun, and um, it's I'm about time for you. Looking, yeah, it's. I'm 42. You're years You're not getting old. any younger. Yeah, and I don't want to be like an old <laughs> fart. You know, yeah, dad, yeah. You know, like yeah. an old dad. Like, and I've seen old dads, and they do a good job. But I think I want to enjoy like my. Because imagine when my kid is 20, I'm gonna be 60. Oh shit. Okay. I'll be like. I hope he has a kid soon. <laughs> I could be a grandfather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, so you're excited. Are you scared at all? Um, no, I'm not, no. It's I. I would be scared if, like, for example, I was thinking about it and talking about it with um, a friend of mine over the phone, and I was saying like, if this were happening to me when I was like in my early 30s, yeah, 
um, I would have been scared shitless. Okay. Because so like I my age, you'd be aware. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I didn't have like my business set up. I, you know, I had just been deported here. I was basically broke. I would have been working like three jobs if mm-hmm. I had a kid coming. But the thing about the kid is that like now that it's coming, like I don't leave this office right now. Like I'm just like on complete like grind mode. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like more than before. Like yeah. before I was doing it, but you know, every other day I would go to the bar and stuff. Like uh-huh. Yesterday I went for Thursday night football the first time in like a month. Okay, so your life is already changing a it's bit. It's already changing. Okay, I guess it's it has to, changing. right? Yeah, you have to yeah. change, right? And uh, do you know how to raise a child? Are you gonna be watching YouTube videos and- I have been watching YouTube videos, but um when my brother was born I was 11 and I helped raise him because oh, okay. my parents had to work a lot and so I, I took care of him a lot. So I know how to change a diaper. Uh-huh. I know how to feed him. I okay. know how to do stuff. So maybe that's why you're not so worried about it. You yeah, already know some of the steps. I already know the steps. I would be yeah. scared as fuck, man. Yeah. like yeah. I don't know nothing about raising a you know, baby. Yeah. I'm an only yeah, child as well. And kids, I'm an so. only child too. Yeah, true. But babies are different than, to kids. You true. Know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have a night nurse. That's for sure. A, Absolutely. A nurse and and you're set up well now. So yeah. you, you're ready. It's, it's time. That's exciting. It's going to be good. Yeah, I can't wait. And then we can train up to um, be a VA. Yes, Teeny. We need a child raising master class. <laughs> Who's going to give that? <laughs> I, I, we both I'll know nothing. I'll have to go through it first and then make, it, make the, cl- the course. So, Absolutely. yeah, that's probably the best okay, that's thing that's one. happened okay. in my life this year. Um, number two is. Isn't that funny? That's the best thing that happened in your life, but required the least amount of effort. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> it required effort. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what kind of effort you're putting in. <laughs> Sorry, Kato. <laughs> That's why uh, I'm not a father. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put in some work, man. All right. Before uh, we get sidetracked, number two. Uh, yeah. So uh, number two would be the creation of the Medellin Masterclass. For okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, that one, it's because it aligns, you know, when they... I, I was just watching, you know, Ali Abdal, yeah. the, the YouTube legend. Uh, yeah, the, he has a great YouTube channel. And he his latest video was about for planning for the next year, right? Like resolutions. And one of them it was, and, and the way that he plans stuff out and he suggests people plan it out is for it to align with mind, body, and soul, okay. right? Like whatever your, 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 your plans are. And that's basically what I do with my entire life. Anything that I want to do in life. I plan it thinking of those two, uh, those three things, which is mind, body, and soul. Okay. And it's, you know, mental health, physical health, and spiritual, spiritual health, mm-hmm. right? So the Medellin Masterclass aligns with everything, um, all those three things. Okay. Because, How so? Uh, well, for example, in uh, for mental health, doing the Medellin Masterclass and doing this right now and, 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 the, and the Medellin Buzz channel, I incorporate those two together, Okay, um, are low stress. So mm-hmm. it's like zero mental health. Uh, if anything, it makes me more happy. And yeah. you know how happy I get uh-huh. when I do my li- the yeah. lives. Yeah. I love going live. Andrew, uh, we, we had a chat before. We were on a um, client call and he's like, man, I get so excited when... Uh, <laughs> when I get so excited when I have a live scheduled for that day and I go to Cairo, I'm like, man, for a 42 year old guy, Andrew's got some very beautiful childish qualities <laughs> when he gets excited about this stuff. But it's great. Like you, none of this is work for you. You'd do this for free every yeah, day. Anyway. I would yeah. do it every day, yeah. even if I didn't make a cent at it. But it, so monetizing it through the Medellin Masterclass helps out with the physical part, yeah. right? Because that's economical. It's something okay. uh, tangible. So that's the physical part and then the spiritual part also in line with the mental health because I feel like I'm doing good to other people by yeah. showing them the reality of living in Medellin, mm-hmm. right? It's not it's not like all, you know, butterflies, rainbows, yeah. unicorns out here. There yeah. is danger, there is safety issues, but if you do it the right way, you can live a very happy life. Yeah. So and you're improving for, people's lives too. Yeah, and I'm yeah, yeah hopefully improving people's yeah. lives. Um so yeah, that's the that's the thing. Awesome. Um, and then third um, thing that I am proud of and happy that happened this year, I would have to say um, buying my fifth apartment and finishing that up and, and wow, remodeling it. Wow, you got some it. heavy hitting stuff happening uh, this year. Yeah, this year was like, uh, I'm telling you, this third quarter, uh, sorry, this fourth quarter was definitely the best quarter I've ever had in my life. Yeah. And I hope to continue that. Roll that into next year. Nice, man. <laughs> so really hitting your stride at 42 years old, which yeah. not many people can say. Yeah, no, I, I, sometimes people do it younger, sometimes yeah, older. Yeah. This is my journey. Yeah. I never, I had, I, I read a really good quote the other day. It says, never compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 12. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you, you, 
you're I never compare myself yeah. to anybody but myself. Like, Absolutely. Comparison is the worst thing you can do. Like comparison yeah. is the thief of joy, as they say. Yeah. As long as you compare yourself with yourself yesterday, yeah. get a bit even one percent better every day. That's that's yeah. gonna how you're gonna be happy and keep pushing forward, right? Yeah. Now let's get to yours. But before we get to yeah, yours, let's, take let's some say questions. hi to some people here. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, the marvelous, hi, marvelous Ignacio pa Plaza on AK's channel. Hello, Medellin. How's it going? Darwin, the destroyer. What's up, chat? Let's go. How are you doing? Uh, CBL Daddy, Streets. What's up, Streets? Can't wait to embark my journey in Medellin. I can't wait for you to embark your journey as well. We have Gordon Gecko saying uh, Gordon from Gecko. Fin he's tuning in from Finland. Go the famous Gordon there we Gecko? Go. From Finland, yeah. Let's go. We have uh, <laughs> CBL Daddy's been following me closely. He said, AK celebrated New Year's in five different countries last five years, I think. <laughs> Man, I actually forgot about that. I posted an Instagram thing about, yeah, the last five years I've been in five different countries. Yeah. And this year will be six. I didn't even no I didn't even plan it like this. It just happens. You like haven't this. had a New Year's in Colombia? Or are you going to be in Bolivia? Uh, I'm going to be in Bolivia this okay. year. Yeah, nice. la last year I was in Brazil. The year nice. before I was in Maybe Colombia, year before That's Mexico, awesome. somewhere else. I don't know. We'll see where I am next year. Yeah. Um, but we have uh, Ignacio. Ignacio. Ignacio actually commented on one of our videos about real estate. So okay. he had something to clarify. So okay. he wanted to say that recently we did a video with Rick. And I've heard you say this as well, that there's no MLS in Colombia. Yeah. And Ignacio no. wanted to argue that point. That he, there is an MLS? Yeah. Oh, uh, I've heard that there is like a... Um, kind of a centralized data for a center for real estate but it's not updated it's okay like, you know it's, it's like it's, old kind of yeah not it's, trustworthy it's data not, it's not very reliable yeah okay it's Ig like nobody uses it really okay ignacio can you just uh, clarify what you mean by that um the marvelous 16 they said joel who's your barber they did a great job thank you my barber is mateo from um beard man barbershop on calle Beardman. yeah calle diez a in provenza yeah um and yeah, my beard is mega crispy. I just got it cut like 20 minutes ago. I when, got mine like two hours ago. Yeah. When I come live, when I come on live, um, yeah, I am legit. looking my best because I always get a haircut just before. Yeah. I see, so I learned something today uh, that there's the high fade yeah. and then the low fade. I was doing you the You just low learned fade. that? No, I, I, I learned. What I learned was that I look better with the high fade. This is a high fade. Yeah. This is what do you like, guys think? Can you show everybody yeah, my, how you're looking? My, okay. Yeah, this like, is the high fade. That's the high fade. It looks better because before it was down here. Yeah. And the hair was like getting like weird. Like, okay. But yours looks good with the low fade. Mine's low? Okay. Oh, yeah, I, that's I, low. I'll just show him a photo and say, do this, mate. <laughs> <laughs> is it a photo of yourself? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a photo. <laughs> you, you should do that. Like, I should, yeah. Cut my, my hair like this guy. This is the perfect looking guy. Do it like me. <laughs> um, Trader Dye. Hey guys, I want to move to Colombia, but I was looking at taxes and it's insane. How do you deal with taxes? Um, well, you do deal with uh, taxes here are very similar to the United States. Um, there are a lot of um, breaks and stuff if mm -hmm. you create like a company, etc. A lot of people, <laughs> when you're making a ton of money, um, I have a few friends that live six months in Panama. Yes, yeah. zero foreign income tax mm -hmm. there. But if you're like, for example, me, I don't. I don't want to move to Canada, uh, to Canada. I don't want to move to Panama because I don't want to have to live there six months out of the year. So yeah. what I do is I have corporations in the United States, corporations here as well to make sure that I'm paying the least amount, but paying, right? Like making sure that I'm break, you know, using the tax code. The legally to, to, using the tax code. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And, and it, you can do it. Yeah. Um, a very, good accountant will help you a lot. Yeah, a good accountant. If you yeah. need a good accountant, join the Medellin Masterclass. My accountant is on our list, mm -hmm. along with others on that uh, in the Masterclass that we share with everybody. I get a lot of questions about it. I don't really know how to answer it properly without sounding like a tax deceiver, but maybe you can word it better. Many people look at the tax and say, <laughs> holy shit, I've got to pay 50% double income tax and stuff. But that's not the case of what people pay. How would you explain that better? Um, I think Donald Trump explained it the best. <laughs> we don't like saying the T word here, but... But he explained it the best. He's like, I use the tax, the same tax code that they've created uh -huh. um, to get breaks. Okay. If they don't like that, if they want me to pay more taxes, then get rid of all the breaks okay. for businesses and for using the tax code, right? Okay. So, so use all the legal ways to leverage your position to pay less tax. To pay less tax. Okay. Here and Anyone who asked me about tax, that's the answer that yeah, I was looking the, for. And, yeah. and it's the smart way to do it because mm -hmm. uh, it's not about not paying. It's about getting as many breaks yeah. so that you can continue to employ people, to make more investments, to uh, generate more income, 
and um, and and help others, right? That's a absolutely one hundred percent. So we have some questions on your. What's channel? up? Uh, yeah. So let's say, uh, oh, Glenn. What's up, AK? Your smile is pretty awesome too. Uh, uh. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> too nice, too friendly. <laughs> Julian, Julian Hurtado. So you pay taxes in the U.S. having a company in the U.S.A. and not in the U. What? And not in the U.S. Um, yeah, my well, my corporation in the United States is in the United States, so it has to pay the state tax. It's a Delaware S corp, so there is no state tax, but you do have to report, and you also have to pay federal tax, right? So, so that's where we pay. Um, yeah. Let's get to um, my things that I'm thankful about. Uh, yeah. So, what are you yeah. thankful for? That three things that you were <laughs> thankful this year for. I think you can guess probably two of them. One's the same of yours, yeah, and it's not having class. a child. No, master <laughs> master class, class yeah. for sure. That's been awesome, and it's it's been really great for my life too because I didn't really realize the type of people that we'd be attracting. Yeah. And uh, a lot of these people I'm hanging out with now and learning from people maybe 10, 20 years ahead of me, right. and it's given me like a lot of entrepreneur knowledge, yeah. and it's been great. Uh, number two, uh, I'm really great grateful for obviously my girlfriend, Carolina. Okay. We just celebrated... Uh, this week, two years together. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, so that's two gone. Two years. Two years, yeah. Hmm. So that's gone really, really And you guys are living together. We've live, been living together so for one year. for a year. technically married now. Like, yeah, I guess know, in the eyes of the law. Um, domestic partnership. Domestic partnership, yeah. yeah. That's the visa that I'm going to get next year. So yeah. Oh, you're, so you're going to get that visa. Yeah, we're going to get the domestic partnership you know what's visa. Pr uh, in, in Colombia, not unlike in the United States, in the United States, getting married, you get tax breaks. But in Colombia, I don't know what those tra tax breaks are. So yeah, it'd be I'm not really, to find out. Yeah, I'll, I'll report back, but I'm not really thinking about tax at the moment. I'm thinking about staying in the country, <laughs> 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 not getting kicked out. <laughs> uh, T-Mac. Yeah. What's good, T-Mac? So that's number two. And uh, number three, I would say, is that I ticked off something of my bucket list this year, which I um, started basically getting seriously into tennis this year. Oh, and right. uh, I wanted to join my first competition and play uh, before the year was over. So I played last week, uh, two weeks ago, uh, made the semifinal, got absolutely chomped in the semifinal, six okay. zip, six zip, Ooh. against a guy who actually plays university here, college tennis player at oh, University of Antioquia. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, so didn't well, have much good, chance. Though. But so I, I, did, I made it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. And I never played before in my life. So that's amazing. Those yeah. are the three things. So three things. That the pretty big, year. big year this year. Yeah. I think this year has been, for me, it has definitely been the best year I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. um, definitely looking forward to 2024. What about you guys? What are you proud of this year? Uh, Medellin says that he moved to Medellin. Let's go. That's good. Yeah. That's a great. Oh, that's that's great. a huge milestone for many people. It was for me. Yeah. It wasn't for you because you got booted here, but yeah, yeah. for me it was a yeah, milestone. But, but it was for me. Uh -huh. yeah, it was a big change and it was a good move, right? Yeah. Uh, Gekka, what's up, Gekka? Geo, how you doing, Geo? <laughs> EST should say, said you should do tax evasion masterclass. Uh, <laughs> no, we wouldn't call it that. It would be... Um, it would be called tax management. Tax management. Tax management yeah, masterclass. That sounds so boring, though. Tax How boring. Ma tax, would that be? <laughs> tax tax massaging masterclass. But I actually like learning about that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, you like learning about tax? Yeah, like how I can make more money or keep more money in my pocket ah, yeah. to re reinvest. Like that's the best. Um, what's up? Uh, Steel uh, Street says personal training, nutrition, and content creation is what I'm bring I'm bringing to the table. Hopefully. With help of the Medellin Buzz, I can also get on board with real estate. That's good. That's good. Yeah, he's doing a lot of things. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty that's good. A lot of things. <laughs> um, how, how come when he says Medellin Buzz, a little orange thing comes up on there? Um, because he 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 tagged, oh, he tagged it, it with the oh, ads. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, Daniel Kalili Nielsen IQ says, "Hey, I'm 18, visiting Medellin in June. I speak a fair bit of Spanish. What's your advice to a young fella visiting Medellin?" Ooh, let's go. 18, good on you for traveling, actually, yeah. by yourself and getting out into the world. Yeah, um, really well. I'm, how do, I'm assuming you of maybe Spanish descent, or did you learn Spanish? Yeah. Um, but some advice for a young fella: just have fun, mate, and be. Uh, yeah. Watch our videos, learn what you need to do about safety, what you should do, what you shouldn't right. do. And uh, yeah, just um, be cautious, but stay educated and have fun and yeah. do all the cultural activities. Don't just come here and stay in Poblado, drink and go home. Go do a coffee tour, go do some city tours, learn about the city, take some salsa classes, yeah. um, do things like that to meet the locals. Yeah, I was just going to say, do the things that you like to do that, or maybe even push yourself out of your comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, that's a good one. But join groups. The, uh, go to the MDE community. Just type that into Google, MDE, like the, the acronym for Medellin, mm -hmm. MDE, and then the word community all together. You'll find uh, the link tree to all of the links 
to all of the WhatsApp groups for all of the things that that community does. And it's like, it's a giant list of WhatsApp groups where you can join. And um, let's say you like hiking, they organize hiking trips. Let's say you like tennis, there's a tennis group, anything that you want to do that. I mean, there's even like board games too. Yeah. Um, we have EST who says he's proud of getting in much better shape. That's always a great yeah. thing for people to do at any yeah. age. Setting up a good remote job, that is key to moving to Medellin. Uh, and getting clear on my intentions to leave the USA. That sounds like a legendary yeah, 2023. That's awesome. Great job, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so this video today we're talking about is actually a good transition, what he says there. Yeah, um, so I should it, open up our notes, yeah. actually. I well, in my that. last video, if you guys watched, I gave you a seven-step, uh, I guess, transition or guide to exit your office life and get to the point where you're ready to move overseas, okay? Yeah. So that was kind of chapter one. Now, once you have that uh, remote job set up, as ASD said he has, now we move into part two, all right? right? So more or less, you can't move to Medellin unless you have a way to make money here, remote, or you have a lot of savings. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, once you've got that remote job, then we move into the things you need to do to move and make a life here in Medellin, right? Yep, exactly. That's uh, the, uh, I, and a lot of people make resolutions, but they don't keep them. Yeah. Uh, present company included. Okay. I got, I've done that before too, where I, you know, I have uh, a goal mm -hmm. and I don't keep it. Right. I don't keep that resolution for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, like most people, reasons. Yeah, New, Year's, New Year's resolution should just be called January resolution. Yeah. Which is <laughs> Life gets in the up. way, right? Yeah. yeah. It's tough sometimes, but mm -hmm. the, um, but the whole point is that when I actually write my resolutions down okay. and I have them visible like throughout the year, mm -hmm. that's when I get things done. Like, okay. for example, I have my, I, I, I love stationery. I have, I always have like, um, you have a little book here? Yeah. Like, for example, that's like what I did today. And I, I, I kind of do that. Is it a book written in this is some Chinese or something? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That, that, that looked really bad, actually. Uh, no, yeah, that, was, that was today. Okay. So, that's like, English. Remember, we had like the newsletter, okay. all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I use this to like see the things that I want to do. Old school. You know, Old it was the last school. time I actually wrote something? Long time ago. I didn't even. I didn't even own a pen, to be honest. I, with you. I love stationery. Okay. Like, that's that in the toy section yeah. at a store is like my thing. <laughs> this goes back to the childish qualities that I would say is very endearing in Andrew's personality. Um, so, what were we talking about? Uh, we New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions, yeah. and the topic for today, which is basically a guide to moving to Medellin in 2024. Uh huh. And um, I guess we'll get started. Uh, what is if you're moving to Medellin, let me ask you this, uh, AK. Okay. If, if you were to move to Medellin... I'm not going to look at the notes. I'm going to look over here. Yeah, yeah. No, if you were to move to Medellin, mm -hmm. what would be the first thing that you would tell yourself to do? Okay, so I'm in Australia. Yeah. In my office, looking. I want to move to Medellin. Yeah, what do like, I do? Screw this job. Okay. Um, what do I want to do? Yeah. I would look up probably areas to stay. Areas to stay? Yeah. Uh, but before that, entry requirements. Entry requirements. <laughs> How do I get in? Yeah. Do I need a visa? Do I need something? Because some countries are harder than others. Right. Uh, and then the second thing would be where to stay. Yeah, where to stay. Yeah, is that the right answer? Uh, I think that is the okay, right good. answer. <laughs> Guys, what do you think? Would that be the first thing that you look for? I know that some people might say, well, the first thing that I would figure out is my money situation. <laughs> like, okay. But let's well, assume that you already said that you already have, you already have yeah. a way to make money yeah. remote, yeah. right? Yeah. That's so a prerequisite that. for this lesson. So that's the prerequisite that you have some way. You, you either have a ton of savings, yep. you have investments. Residual that, income, yeah. yeah. Something, you have your money situated. Uh so that you can come here and have, you know, a $2,000 plus budget, hopefully. Yeah. Um, if you go a little lower, a little more than that, that's perfect. Obviously, higher, the better. Yeah. But, um, I but think yeah. from 1500 is good. Yeah. 1500 That's good. probably baseline. Yeah, 1500 is a good budget. Yeah. What's up, Chris? How you doing? George Morales. How's it going? Hope you're having a good day. Uh, we have a question for, or a statement from Trade or Die. Uh, he said... Uh, don't fall in love with the first girl you meet. I think he was giving a tip. <laughs> no. He was giving a tip to Daniel um, okay. when he said, I'm 18 and I'm visiting. That's a good tip, no, actually. I meant the other Oh, the other one? <laughs> this one. First thing, he said, yeah. no, first thing I would figure out is what do I need to take care of here first? Uh, he means first in, in, in the Australia or yeah, yeah, wherever yeah, you're yeah, coming yeah. from. Yeah, That's yeah. actually a really good point. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, one of the first things that you definitely should do is figure out what you're going to do with all your possessions and all that. Yeah. If you are planning a move, a lot of people don't plan that complete move right away. Yeah, anyway, yeah. they come here part time and then go back. Uh -huh. So situating all that stuff with storage units, True. selling your stuff, True. 
probably a, a good first step. Yeah. Um, but let's say you've got that sorted out uh -huh. and you're looking at Medellin. I think you're right. The first thing is, what are the e entry requirements? Um, can you give us a little synopsis yeah. of what that so is right now? It depends really on country, but most of us are coming from the US, Canada, UK, or maybe Australia, right? Yeah. Um, so all of us, it's pretty easy to get in. You can arrive in Medellin and you get 90 days immediately. Okay. They'll just uh, look at your passport, they stamp it. The only thing you need to do before you land is go to a website called CheckMig. Yeah. You need to fill that out. And then when you come in, they stamp that you're good for 90 days, right? Okay. So that's the entry requirements. That's it. <laughs> you're that's in. It. You're yeah. In. That 90 days, uh, once it's um, about to expire, normally I would recommend doing it a month before the first 90 days is about to expire yeah. you can actually extend it online for oh, another really? 90 days wow, if you want to okay. know how to do that go on my channel and look i made a full tutorial on how to do that okay so basically you can get 180 days in the country every year every calendar year that is mm -hmm. january 1st right. to december 31st okay. not 180 days without any type of visa okay. so that's your entry requirements that's what great a, and then, for example, let's say you're up with that 180 yeah. days, you have to leave, obviously. You have to leave or you have to apply for a visa okay. to stay longer okay. term. That can be in the form of most people are doing digital nomad visa. Right. That's probably the easiest one. If you want to study, you can get a student visa. Um, those are probably the easiest. The other ones are a bit more difficult, but they're more to do with like investing and putting money into the country. Right. Yeah. Um, we have a good question from Derwin. Derwin says, uh, what's, a good ball what's a ballpark figure f of a good savings? Good savings. So yeah. it depends what you want to do. What I always tell people whenever they jump on calls with me and ask for some advice is that I would plan six months of savings, right? So figure out your budget, maybe right. two grand a month, times it by six, and then 12 grand, right? 12 grand. And that's if you don't have any type of job at all. And right. in that time, I would be trying to find a job because <laughs> you don't want to just burn your money and then, oh, yeah. shit, I got to go back home. I've seen so many people do that. Yeah, that's yeah. just a buffer to help you with your living expenses while you're actively searching for a job. Right, yeah. I've seen so many times people that come down here with their savings and then, you know, they're in six month six and yeah. they're like... I need to get a job. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. what were you doing for uh, six months? They were partying, burning the money or yeah. whatever. And then they either find a local job or an online job, or they just have to go back to their their country and go yeah. live at their parents until they figure things out. And I've seen it happen a lot. And those same people will figure it out because they already got a taste of what life could be here for six months. They're like, fuck, I got to get to work. I got to get my money right so that I can come back yeah. and live there. Once you, you get know, a taste. free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. all over. Once you go Medellin, you never go back. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that is, uh, uh, we have some more questions. Yeah. Benny, uh, actually first we have, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Dafa? The fact ninth state. Why would, just read the first letter. <laughs> you, I, you need to read the whole thing. <laughs> he said, hello from Alaska. I have homes in Cali and Dagua. Oh, I'm putting up a video um, here. Um, in like two days that i interviewed a guy from alaska that just moved down oh, here yeah the yeah the, the time kettle yeah the okay, time kettle awesome, video awesome. yeah alaska what yeah a, what alaska. a place what a difference what a in difference. lifestyle right? <laughs> <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. i can't imagine how cold it is right now uh est can you extend the 180 right away yes you can so in other countries they give you the extra 90 days of visa yeah um from the day that you apply which oh, is right. bad, but in Colombia, they actually tack it on to when your original ah, 90 was. A, so you can basically arrive, do it straight away, and then you get six months, That's which good. is probably the more responsible thing to do so you don't forget yeah. about it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Ben C says, what's the most feasible way for me to rent something furnished long-term for a fair value with the digital nomad visa alone as a US citizen? We're going to get the, into that a bit later down that. the list, yeah. right? We're going to get into that. Awesome. Uh, Julian says, I've been thinking about selling everything here in the US and buy three apartments, rent to own, wait, rent two, and live in one. That's, That's a good idea. And go and uh, in one, and for sure looking for a remote position. Okay. That's, that's I mean, one. if he's renting out, if you're renting out two apartments, Julian, you might not even need a job. Yeah, you might not <laughs> even need it if you have two. Uh, yeah, you Airbnb's could be just chilling. Are, but maybe he's bored. Maybe he wants to do something constructive. I would just want sit around. Yeah, 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 I wouldn't want to just sit around. Uh, that's what we've both found out about yeah. life when we were vacationing, and we're yeah. like, oh, this is all just surfing and. Drinking yeah. beers. This is boring after a while, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Glenn asks, uh, "What? Uh, sorry, uh, Glenn? Yeah, Glenn. Oh, yeah, Venus. Yeah, yeah Venus yeah. says uh, research the neighborhoods and get a feel for a different place uh, places to oh, live. That's the first thing that he that's, would do. That's the first thing you would do, and that's exactly what would be the next step. Yep. So let's say that you've got the entry requirements down packed. 
Next thing that I would do is what you said is to research the areas mm-hmm. where you want to live. Yes. So um, how would you go about doing that? I would watch some videos. There's many, many videos on YouTube um, where people talk about different um, right. locations. We even yeah. have one. Uh, it's comparing the three uh, most popular neighborhoods for expats. So you can watch that. Yeah. Uh, we have pros and cons about everything. You can read blogs. Yeah. But those are the best ways. Yeah. And then when you get down here, I always advise people, hey, if you have a month and maybe your thing's not just like enjoy the city for a vacation and go, if you're actually doing like a reconnaissance mission yeah. uh, to actually find out if you want to move down here, don't just spend the whole month in Poblado. Go to Poblado for maybe a week. Mm-hmm. Go to Envigado for a week. Go to Laureles for a week. Feel it out. See which you like best. Then spend the last week or whatever remaining time you have in the place you like. And then narrow it down to, I guess, um, like specific barrio. Right. Because where you live in Manila, Mani- Andrew lives in Manila in the Poblado yeah. neighborhood. But Manila is very different to like the heat of Provence or Yeras. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and there's so many different little neighborhoods within neighborhoods. Yeah, micro like, neighborhoods. Yeah, micro yeah. neighborhoods. For example, in Laureles where AK lives, there's micro neighborhoods. You can be in a very busy place or a quiet place mm-hmm. or... Um, you you uh, can be next to parks or you can park, be next yeah. to the soccer stadium or you can be next <laughs> to the nightclub street where it's right. pumping 24-7. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so you got to find that stuff out. So you got to find that stuff out and... The best way to do that, number one, is to go into, uh, obviously, Google Maps and yeah. start looking at them. But to really get a feel of, of the neighborhood, the best thing to do is maybe talk to people that are already there um, and watch videos of people that are already there, like watch our videos. There's a bunch of other YouTube channels also that do like, you know, the bike tour or whatever. They go through the neighborhood. That's what I would do. And also go into the Facebook groups. Um, and ask uh, uh, where people are living and what their experience is. Yeah. People love to talk about... And in the Facebook groups, that's one thing that I do like about the Facebook groups here, even though they can be very toxic <laughs> sometimes. And by I, sometimes, I mean most of the I time. was just going to say, don't go to the Facebook groups because if you ask one question, you're going to get 400 different yeah, answers you're, and, most and of 399 them are, of them are incorrect. And the, Yeah, and, and a lot of people troll on <laughs> Yeah, they do like, absolute trolls. It's like, I don't yeah. know why people are so bitter. Like, the, it seems like people are so bitter. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, uh, man. But it seems like the people that reply are the bitter ones. Yeah. The happy ones aren't even looking at Facebook. Yeah. They're living their life. Absolutely. Um, but you could get a good feel from those comments and from those people yeah um, i think if, the best way to is to watch videos yeah, yeah yeah maybe read blogs because people bitter people are not spending a long time making a video or spending a long yeah. time making a vlog bitter people are like oh yeah i hate my life fuck you you fucking bar. <laughs> don't come to medellin you fucking gringa uh, and cancel. i love yeah i love living in laurelis <laughs> except for the 20 stabbings that happened <laughs> yeah, in yeah. 2021. Yeah, idiots, man. <laughs> yeah, come like, on, mate. Oh, yeah. man. Like some people sometimes will come on my channel and then I'll get like notification, 10 new comments. And it'll just be like 10 comments about like yeah. absolute hatred. And I'm like, right. why do you have time for this shit? Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that, definitely that's number two is to f- figure out where you want to live. Start doing some research. And then once you actually start doing that research, you need to rent, find a place to rent. Yeah. And that's the tough part if you're not here physically mm-hmm. because the best and trusted, the most trusted website that you can do that on is Airbnb. Yet those prices are inflated. So what I usually recommend to my friends and family and obviously students from the Medellin Masterclass is like, okay, before you you know get down here, book your place on Airbnb for two weeks. Yep. Um, and you're going to pay an inflated price. But while you're down here for those two weeks, you start looking for something more long-term uh, at more of the local rate, even if it is furnished, you can find furnished apartments here without going on Airbnb. But I wouldn't recommend d- doing that if you're not actually here, because as someone was just saying, uh, Cod says, one thing I didn't know about Colombia is that people are so distrustful. Yeah, because people here because will stand Colombia. <laughs> because it's Colombia. Yeah. They've been at war for what? 200 years. Yeah. Literally, there's still a civil I've seen war. so many people getting scammed still yeah. here yeah. in the rental market, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. People still get it still scammed happens. because yeah. in the United States, if you grow up your whole life in the United States in like, let's say a good neighborhood in a good state where the crime rate's low mm-hmm. and scamming is not a thing, you you trust the world. And you do. You come to Colombia. Yeah, even Colombia. more so in Australia. Like people still leave their door open and unlocked yeah, and stuff. Yeah, the b- worst thing that can happen is a kangaroo. Can <laughs> <laughs> can boot you can boot you in the face. In the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But here, yeah, no, it's not like that. No, it's yeah. not like that. You you have to have your guard up um, a bit when you're coming down here. So the best thing to do is 
Go through a trusted source if you'll have one already. If you don't have a trusted source to rent an apartment, go on Airbnb. What I, what some of my friends have done and some of the people that I rent my Airbnbs to, and I thought this was really smart, was they rent my Airbnb for like a week. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as they're, they've rented it, they're already sending me messages about, hey, I'd like to extend. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get on WhatsApp or whatever, and then we figure that part out, yeah. which is great. Uh, or, hey, I'm going to be coming back after my stay. Can can we talk about that You know, off of the platform? Yep. Although Airbnb hates it, it's just a fact of business for them. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a thing that happens at, on all platforms. It happens on like these uh, platforms for online work like Upwork. You, know, you get a client there. The goal is to get them off the platform yeah. so you don't get charged the 30%, 20, 30%, right? 30%. It's 30, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, something like yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the first thing you need to know, like uh, Glenn, actually one of our um, subscribers, and we've been in contact with Glenn, is he actually reached out to us and asked for some help. We, we sent him a couple of resources, and he actually uh, found a lot about where to stay. And now he's found the, space, uh, the place that's perfect yeah. for him. He said he's staying in Boliviriana. Uh, a couple of blocks from the university. Great location for many things. Right, right. near me, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so find, figure that out. Figure because that out. if you Living stay, situation. do not come to Medellin and be like, I've heard so many people go, oh, I hate Medellin. It's just tourists and people trying to sell me all the shit. I'm like, where did you stay, bro? He's like, oh, one month in Poblada. I'm like, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, like Provenza. Like, oh, yeah. no, of course. It's just like prostitutes everywhere. I'm yeah. like, no shit, dude. You stayed in a hostel, a hotel in Yeras and didn't leave the block, did yeah. you? It's like, yeah, okay. Okay, well, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. you got to try all the places. There's so yeah, much that's to... Like saying, that's, that's like going to Cancun and staying at the resort and saying, oh, man, I hate Mexico. That's like, going to, <laughs> that's like going to LA, staying in Skid Row and be like, fuck, too many homeless yeah, people here. I thought LA was movie stars. <laughs> what is this shit? <laughs> well, I guess that could happen still in LA. <laughs> there is a lot of homelessness in there now. But yeah, yeah um, let's see. Do we have any other questions? Uh, Buddha, I have learned a good bit on uh, in books and blogs, but you guys have been the most helpful through your channels. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate in books? that. But, but There's books about Yeah, medicine? there is a couple books on uh, I, I've, that part of my research um, for the Medellin Masterclass, yeah. which was recommended by our mentor, uh, Sunny, yeah. uh, was to research what books are written about what your, your course is about. Oh, okay. And there is a couple, but they're outdated. Some books about like, uh, like Lonely Planet move. or something? No, no, like how to move, like from independent authors okay. on Amazon. Okay, awesome. Yeah, there's nice. a couple, but there's no, there's no like one definitive book. They're all kind of outdated. how to move to to Medellin. Oh to my Col- God, yeah, there's to book? Medellin to Holy Colombia. Shit, yeah, there's a that. book. We should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> we got enough things going on. We don't know to be authors as well, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, what else? Questions? You haven't written anything in like I don't 10 even years. have a pen. <laughs> you don't even have a pen. How are we gonna write a book? <laughs> um, voice note to my ghostwriter. <laughs> Um, which which screen are we? Looking? Who's happening? What's going well, on? Who's <laughs> happening? <laughs> uh, I, th- I think you have a couple. Of okay, okay. There. Um, we have uh, oh, marvelous sixteen said the bandeja paisa is the best Colombian dish he's heard. Uh, but are there other Colombian dishes you both recommend? Yeah. Disclaimer. Don't ask us about food. Yeah. We are <laughs> vegan. both vegans living in a country full of meat. So we can't really give you amazing, amazing yeah, tips. Like, like I can't give you tips right now on where to go, where to eat yeah. because I'm vegan. But I've mm-hmm. I, I've been vegan going on five years. So I've been here 13 years. The The other half of the or the other years I was eating meat. Um, so and obviously I grew up in a Colombian family. We had a Colombian restaurant. My dad's a chef. Uh, he was the chef for that restaurant. And um, my favorite dishes are ajiaco, mute. I, I'm a soup guy. Okay. I, I love soup. So ajiaco is a soup. It's a chicken soup. Mute is also a soup. Um, and uh, uh, it's sancocho. Sancocho is another stew. It's an amazing stew with three different types of uh, meat in it, which mm-hmm. are pork, uh, beef, and chicken. And um, I would say my favorite, favorite Colombian dish as a whole, um, it's not even the bandeja paisa. I just think that's too giant. It's, it's like way just, too it's big. Like, it's basically a bowl of fried meats. Yeah, it's a bunch it's of fried It's just too heavy. Yeah, I can't it's deal a, with it. I do like the blood pudding or what do you call that? The, the uh, sausage. Morcilla. Uh-huh. The morcilla. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. But um, okay. but yeah, um, there's a ton of dishes. Um, you would be surprised if you actually look it up and go full list of Colombian dishes because my dad used to do that. He was the chef. Mm. And he would make them all. It's so so good. I've liked all the ones that I've tried, but they're vegan 
version, so it's probably not really like yeah, the original one. Yeah, it's not the same. One. Yeah, it's yeah. Not the same. Not uh, the same. There's a v- vegan restaurant here called Ama. Yeah. Have you been there? No, I haven't. She does a sancocho, a vegan okay. sancocho with like um, a special type of uh, mushroom yep. that uh, has the texture of chicken, and it tastes very, wow. very close okay. to yeah, yeah, like a real ajiaco. I was like... I was very impressed. Amazing. Let's take a couple more questions. But on the topic of food and veganism, um, I had one of the most random meetups this week on Wednesday, right? A mate of mine who often, he owns a flower shop. He's a local in Medellin. He um, often follows us here. It might be here actually today. Rafa, he invited me to his place and said, hey, uh, you want to come around? Me and 12 other vegans are going to be making pizzas here. I said, how the Where? fuck did you find 12 vegans yeah. in Medellin? <laughs> all Colombians as well. So I went there and yeah, they're all Colombians. And what's best, uh, they all own shops, uh, like restaurants and shops oh and God. domicilio and stuff like that. that yeah, so I went there, got all their contacts. We made pizza. It was an awesome night. Where really was fun. Uh, it was at uh, my mate Rafa's house, just up oh. here in, in Poblado somewhere. Oh, okay. And uh, a couple of the girls were, the, uh, were singers, like uh, trained singers. I bet you they were fine. So too. at the end of the night, I bet they you all were fine. A, they, vegan, they, they, a vegan paisa. It's very. I mean, Colombian women are beautiful. Paisas are beautiful, but a vegan paisa, it's got to be something special. <laughs> Why? Because they're not eating meat, and they got a bit. Well, yeah, because and you have something in common with. Yeah, them that's true. I don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I, I don't know what tangent you went. Pregnant. You a tangent you went on. I got women on the brain. All right. <laughs> My point was, it was a great night, and at the end of the night, they these singers they sang us a few songs. <laughs> So oh, nice. yeah, good stuff. Nice. That sounds awesome. <laughs> that sounds like a good night. That's just Tuesday night in Colombia. Yeah. In yeah. Medellin, yeah. Um, um we have EST actually asked a good question. Uh-huh. I take calls for work every day. Should I try to find a high rise condo for less noise or is it not too bad? No, it's horrible, man. There's noise <laughs> everywhere. Well <laughs> he lives literally there's I live next to Calle Diaz, but in this office I hear nothing. Yeah, but it's soundproof, dude. Yeah, I've got it soundproofed. <laughs> uh, well, it's not even soundproof. Yeah. This is actually for echo. Okay. So the echo, but you've so. kind of treated it a little and then bit. This, yeah. this window is still open. It's yeah. just like a a, a a wooden thing there. But even when I didn't have it, yeah, I actually did it more for my neighbors because since I would talk in here, okay, they could hear, could hear everything uh, down there. I on- now they can't. I honestly have been yeah making videos for like two years now, and in every place I stayed, I've, I've really had issues with noise unless it was high up yeah. and it was a more modern building, which was more catered for soundproofing and yeah. stuff. So if you need to take calls all the time, I definitely would be. Maybe checking out the place first just to make sure it's yeah, not check no out noise. The place. Yeah, yeah. Ch- uh, check out the place first. John Knox, how you doing? John Knox says, what is the correct way to pronounce Medellin? Me- I say en español, yo digo Medellin. Oh, I guess that is kind of different, Medellin. <laughs> I was like, I say Medellin. No, it's Medellin. Yeah, people en- keep en- getting español. into you about that. Like, I, Yeah, I don't understand. Who cares, man? Why don't you fucking say Colombia right? It's, yeah, it's, Colombia. It's Colombia. It's Colombia, yeah. but we say Colombia. Yeah, oh, why don't you say it right in German? <laughs> you know, like, what if a German says Colombia in his tongue? Is yeah. that wrong? No, it's not wrong. No, no. As long uh, as I can understand. As uh, I am uh, all the way NYC said, I'm looking to get into remote work and plan to move to Medellin. I visited there five times. Good job. I have no remote work experience. Any suggestions for a beginner? Any suggestions for finding remote work? This is a million dollar question. If we figured this out and made a course, <laughs> we would be able to retire forever because it's, uh-huh. it's more well, difficult. Well, we've got to do that. <laughs> we should make a course yeah, on how yeah. to find remote work because for me, it's always... It's always been pretty easy. I mean, honestly, it's mm-hmm. like... But you have to put in work. It's not just like... put in work, yeah. Put in your email address and someone's going to send you $50,000. It's, yeah. it's not easy it's at all. It's not easy. You got to learn a you skill. Learn. You got to learn a skill that's uh, monetizable, I yeah, guess. Yeah. You got to put in hours and hours of work into perfecting that skill. Yeah. Then you got to find someone to pay you for having that skill. Yeah. And, <laughs> and if you don't have that skill perfected, then you have to lower your rate. Yes. And basically, that's what I did. I got into digital marketing... Um, you how know, much were you charging when you first when I first started, started like $4 an hour $5 okay. an hour like literally that's what I was charging uh-huh. on Upwork and now my rate is $120 an hour you gotta start um, somewhere yeah so but that's been over 9 plus years of being on that platform yeah um, I did jobs for free yeah yeah I would um, I've done if you're not really an entrepreneur if you haven't worked for free. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't believe anybody that's been an entrepreneur that makes really good money didn't do shit for free at yeah, the beginning. absolutely. And I've done a ton of stuff for free, yeah. um, including giving out information like on yeah, my this channel. Yeah, this is all free. This is all yeah, free yeah, yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Um, Some people might not actually know how much money you make from YouTube. Should we tell them? Uh, yeah, you could so, tell them. So my channel averages on... Average every month, a hundred thousand to one hundred fifty thousand views. Mm-hmm. Can someone guess how much I might be getting paid for this? Go ahead, leave your uh, yeah, what comments do you there. What do you think? One hundred fifty thousand views. How yeah. much am I getting? Let me know. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so as as Buddha Weatherby said, YouTube has some great channels specializing in getting started in remote right. work. This is the greatest time for learning skills because we yeah. have so many free videos and stuff like that and people can uh, go on and learn something basically from knowing nothing to knowing a lot very, very fast. So if you put in the time, if you are passionate about it, you'll get there. Yeah. I, that's what I did. I learned everything I know. I'm a construction engineer. I had zero skills right. to work remote, right? I learned everything I know about content creation, marketing, Facebook ads, everything like that just from watching YouTube. Yeah. 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 And that's taking a, some paid courses and stuff. But yeah. yeah, it depends what stage you're at. I'm the same way with uh, digital marketing. I took a bunch of free courses um, just to learn search engine optimization and how to build a website on WordPress, etc. And um, and then I, I went and uh, as I was learning, I started applying it. Yeah. And um, and now, but like you said, today in this day and age, is the best time to get into remote work because there's so many options. So many. All right, so we've got a few people that have guessed okay. how much money AK makes on his channel. Paul Ashwell says ninety eight US dollars. Okay. EST says fifteen hundred dollars a month. Oh, that's I um, wish. Aaron says seventy five. Erland a month. says sev Erland says seventy five bucks. Hey Erland, how you doing, man? We had a chat on Monday. Uh, <laughs> George able... says eighteen dollars. It's okay. So we got uh, CBL Daddy is the closest. He had three hundred. He said three hundred seventy five dollars. Three hundred seventy five dollars so, a month for the just first on AdSense. Just on AdSense. So YouTube, what they pay me for you guys watching the videos, um, and I'm full time on. I don't have another job like you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for the first ten months, I got paid zero, nothing. Oh yeah. I made basically maybe fifty videos without right. getting paid a cent and then now i get paid basically 300 <laughs> to 350 dollars a month which is, which is still low less than colombian minimum wage <laughs> <laughs> is it it is less than wait, colombian what, uh, wait what's the colombian minimum wage i right think now? it's about 320 no, or I think 330 it was 280 no i thought it was like about 300 now with the guys does anybody know what the uh, because the exchange rate has uh, exchange oh, rate has dropped rate. it's about 300 it's about 300 so yeah you, you're making Colombian <laughs> minimum Columbia wage, minimum wage. <laughs> but uh, YouTube is a tough platform to make money on if you're not making if you don't have like millions of, of views. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't make money from YouTube. No. For example, we have the Medellin Masterclass, mm -hmm. which definitely blows whatever you make on YouTube out of the water. Yeah. Um, but you have to have a product. That yeah. You got to yeah. start somewhere. That's yeah. why I said it's all about working for free, especially when you don't have the skills to translate right. already. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's get into number two number two um so first we Wait. talked about entry requirements yeah so we, if anyone just joined in late uh we're talking about what you need to plan step by step to mm -hmm. make your move to medellin right. right so number one was check the entry requirements right if you can't get in you're fucked <laughs> <laughs> um number two is figure out where you want to live so where you do some research maybe watch some videos blogs and figure out which area is really nice for me because especially in medellin uh this might not be the case for other cities but in medellin like Poblado is very different to Laureles, to very different to Envigado, to Sabaneta. All the areas are very different. Mm -hmm. The prices vary a lot. They so do. what's affordable to you? What activities do you do you like to do? Figure that out and then book a place. Book a place. Yeah. And you said um, book Airbnb first because yeah. that's the safest before that's you get safest, here. Yeah. 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 And then you get here and then what's the next thing? So you've arrived here. Customs uh, or security has let you in. <laughs> You're in your apartment having a cup of coffee. What's the next thing to do? I would say start, uh, well. Oh, there's and, something and you need to do before you get here. Yeah, before you even okay. get here, start learning Spanish. If you don't mm. know Spanish, start learning Spanish. It's best to come to Colombia. I mean, it's not necessary, but your life and your, and, and AK has said this many times on his, uh, on his videos, is that your life will be more enjoyable in Medellin if you actually know the language. Um, so getting started with online courses, maybe. For example, you can get an online tutor that lives in Medellin mm -hmm. uh, th via one of the Facebook groups or just searching online. There's yeah. a oh, italki. italki. Yeah, italki, italki is great. Italki is great. Um, so you can get like a one-on-one -on -one person that you're doing basically like a Zoom call with. Yeah. Maybe once a week, twice a week, and you're improving your Spanish. On top of that, you're learning about the culture because your Spanish teacher is a paisa, mm -hmm. and then. When you get here, you you have the possibility of meeting that person. Yeah, so yeah. now you so have already, a friend on the ground friend, here. Yeah. Um, so it ticks off a bunch of ch uh, boxes that you would that definitely make your life better. So learning Spanish is definitely on the priority mm -hmm. list, right? Yeah. So definitely do that. Even uh, like Babbel, you can do that. That's yeah. a great app. 
And then that's going to help you really navigate the city because if we've said it many, many times before, less than 4% of the um, population here speaks any type of English. Yeah, even in the tourist area, for example, um, for example, the sports bar that I go to, which is right in or right next to Provenza, yeah. frequented by a lot of foreigners. There's a, At times, it's like only foreigners are there, especially mm-hmm. with uh, like uh, NFL Sunday football yeah. or or UFC fights, there's a boxing match tonight, so I'm sure there'll be a bunch of gringos up in there. And they all speak English, but none of the girls that work there, bartenders or waitresses, speak English mm-hmm. at all. Like, there's maybe one or two that know something, but you have to speak to them in Spanish. Yeah. And that's right in the touristy area. That's not even that bad, because you can get by with that. You can just say, like, cerveza or whatever. Yeah. But some things are more difficult. Like, if you go to the gym and you want to sign up, yeah. Ain't nobody speaking English there. No. So how are you going to ask the questions you want to ask or you, how you want to do anything? Yeah. That? Yeah. This back and forth Google Translate is is isn't, tough. Yeah. Is tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do Google Translate out here, especially if you're trying to make, you know, meaningful, uh, meaningful, uh, meaningful connection. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's and, it's hard if you're like, oh, here's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you and, t- talk into it now. And another thing that people might not have um, thought about is that just how you're perceived if you speak the language or even try to speak the language. Yeah. People are a lot more welcoming and th- they'll like you a lot more if you just try because it shows that you're putting some effort into their yeah. country. If you just like get da 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 shove it in their face yeah. they, they're not going to be that yeah, happy it's going to be tough yeah yeah, it, yeah it's uh, and i've seen it happen i've seen guys on dates like doing the whole um uh, the google translate thing i'm like how how far can this go <laughs> you know like uh, like unless if it's just lust and it's like a thing well you yeah know, one time thing it's, it's not like, going to go very far it might not go very far i mean i could be wrong but but um yeah learning spanish is an important one you can definitely find a bunch of groups um, that, or a bunch of info in the groups on Facebook. For that, you can definitely rely on the Facebook groups because yeah. people really don't have anything to troll about there. No. It's like, hey, I've tried to learn Spanish. Who's been your best tutor? There yeah. you can get a lot of good um, recommendations because yeah. they've gone through it. Yeah, so that's definitely, definitely going to help you living in Medellin because you're going to be not just stuck in one little pocket talking to all the gringos, although gringos have fun to talk to but uh, you live in a different country you want to talk to the locals right and you're just going to be set off on all these different random paths in life like for example this week i went to rafa's house yeah having a a dinner there yeah Uh, last night i went to an hour from medellin in the mountains here to uh where my uh, girlfriend's dad grew up um in in the hood as people would Mm -hmm. say and i was talking to all her family and stuff like that can't do that if you don't know spanish exactly yeah that would be <laughs> tough hey squishy plum thank you for the five dollar dono on on ak's channel also Let's nice go. name squishy Thanks, plum. squishy squishy plum is that like an innuendo to a booty i don't know i like uh. it right <laughs> <laughs> <Boy. laughs> uh, um yeah. est said could someone already in the master class upgrade to elite yeah, yes we just had someone doing it yeah we uh, basically all of the elite people have been upgrades yeah 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 so so we discount the amount usually of what you pay for the master class to upgrade to elite so yeah it's not like you have to pay a separate amount yeah um just because the uh the elite is much more um pricier but it's also a vip service yeah where we do everything for you it's more Since- work for us <laughs> <laughs> should, should we talk a bit about that yeah we yeah. should talk about that and get so, some info yeah absolutely so uh, we have our Masterclass Elite Package, which is basically for those of you who like everything done for you, like the Comfort VIP service. Yeah. So you'd just get on a call with us and you'd tell us, I want to get a place in this area. I want it for 12 months. I want to join these groups. I want to find salsa lessons, de- uh, like um, Spanish school and da 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 I want all this done. Um, and on top of that, we basically do everything for you. We yeah. just have a WhatsApp group with you dedicated. You tell us what you want. We're helping you. Uh, and we get you sorted in 90 days or less. Yeah. Or, or your money back. Uh-huh, or you don't yeah. pay. 90 and days or less, we get you situated here with w- your requirements, requirements yeah. for living here. For, living for example, here. we've had a, an elite student that wanted to buy an apartment with a great view, a perfect place for hosting because he's very social, etc. And we found an apartment in less than a month. Yeah. And he's literally closing on it right now. Uh, 
two and a half weeks. He oh, signed he, the papers yeah, he today. He signed the promise signed the papers. to purchase. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, if you want to buy an apartment, that can be difficult too. And obviously, you can do it, but you need to know the right agents yeah. and stuff like that. That's all about oh, having man. the good contacts. We have such good agents, yeah. man. We have like the best. You know, a lot of people complain about, you know, in Colombia not being able to find like good customer service or mm -hmm. good people to work with. All of the people that we work with um, are, that are basically part of our master class or our team are just awesome. Like they, yeah. they're so good. How many apartments do you reckon um, we showed Raj a bit amongst our three agents? Probably um, 20? Probably 20, yeah. yeah 20 so places. Raj saw 20 places in about three weeks and settled on one. Yeah, plus we hooked him up with the lawyers and everything to yeah. get his um, visa sorted and all that. Yeah, yeah, and how it worked for him was he actually got the normal master class yeah. and then he viewed everything and was like, I love this class, uh, guys, that's really, really good. And said, hey, by the way, I spoke to him and said, hey, if you want everything done for you, we can upgrade you. And he said, yeah, man, <laughs> yeah, let's, do, <laughs> let's that. do that. Yeah. So yeah, because he is, uh, he's, he's a busy guy yeah. and he has his own businesses to take care of and stuff. And he was only going to be here for a month. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he gave himself that timeline and gave us that timeline. Yeah. He's like, I have a month and I want to get this, this, that, and that done. And we're like, okay, we'll do it. And or money back. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. And that's why we have the calls as well. To work. <laughs> yeah. That's why we have the calls as well, guys. You can uh, check the link in the description uh, once this video is over, or I'm sure we can. Uh, put it in our yeah. um, walls later. Yeah. You can book a call with us because we need to know what we're signing up yeah, for. Yeah. Because like, we say like we do it for you ninety days or less, or we give you money back. We don't want someone being like, "Hey, I want a penthouse for." Fifty thousand right, dollars. So he's yeah. saying, I can't do that. Yeah, like, so we need to that. get your requirements. Make sure you're on the right page. Make right. sure you're a good fit for what we're offering, and then we move forward with right, it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we're on to number four now. Yes. Uh, number three was learning some Spanish. Uh huh. Uh, what would be the next step when moving to Medellin, apart from the first? Uh, four, uh, three that we went through. Okay, so you're situated here. So now you're here, right? Now you're here. You've, you've arrived. You've, you've and these are things that you can kind of start working on too before you even get yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. There's all these things you can do before you even arrive. Yeah. yeah. But now you've arrived in the city and then you've decided you really, really like living here. Maybe you want to extend your time because as I said before, you only get 180 days in the country on a typical tourist visa. So you need to figure out actual long-term visas. That can be anything from, as I discussed before, the digital nomad visa, yeah. which gives you 12 months, or in some cases, two years. Yeah. Uh, usually you get the two years if you um, apply from your home country. So if you're in the US, you go to the embassy there and apply. I have heard some stories where they will give you two years. Mm -hmm. Usually if you do it from within Colombia, you'll get one year. Okay. So digital nomad visa is one. Yeah. If you want to study Spanish yeah. at maybe a local university or institution right. here, you can get a student visa. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to do some investing, then you can get a real estate visa, right. right? So the big thing, there's two different types of visas. One is called a migrant visa and one's called a visitor visa. Okay. So the student visa and the digital nomad visa, these are temporary visas. Yeah. Usually people that come here with the word nomad is in the title. People come here with the intention of doing something and then leaving. Right. So those do not count towards residency. You can get a hundred years of digital nomad <laughs> visa. You're still not going to be able to apply for Unless residency. Unless they change the law. Unless they change years. the law. <laughs> Unless they change the law. But um, migrant visa is they accumulate. So you need five years of a migrant visa and then you can apply for residency. Then you don't need visas anymore. Yeah. And some of those example are domestic partnership. Right. If you're in a relationship living with a Colombian, which is what yeah, I'm going to do. Situation. If you're married, yeah. if you are a investor, if you've invested over, let's call it $150,000 in an apartment, or you've invested over about 30 k in a local business, hiring locals, etc. Okay. Those are the types that you can accumulate, get mm -hmm. five years and get residency. Yeah. So you'd need to research that. Yeah. That's the next that's, step. <laughs> that's your research right there. Yeah. And um, even going a step beyond that, you can start getting in contact with visa attorneys out here. Uh, for example, our go-to guys are the guys at uh, Nexo Legal, mm -hmm. and they all speak English. Yep. So that is a big plus yeah. because you want to know exactly all of these rules. We know them off, you know, the top of our head mm -hmm. because we deal with this every day. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're new and you don't know about visas, and let's say you don't just plan on living here for one year and then leaving and then going off to another country like a nomad, but you want to stay here longer term and maybe one day get residency, then you should learn all of these laws and, and what is good for you, right? What would work for you? So you should start making that connection with a real estate attorney, or sorry, with a visa attorney and or a personal assistant that can help you. Because 
It's not 100% necessary to get a real estate, uh, sorry, a visa attorney to help you with this stuff. You could do it yourself. Yeah. You could do the visa stuff all yourself. Um, you might make mistakes, which may cost I would not you. recommend that. Yeah. Maybe doing it, the digital nomad visa, you might be able to put together because a lot that, of yeah. information. But like investment, just in our masterclass, there's two things that will really, really fuck you up if you don't know. And then you'll get your investment denied. Right. And what they do is, if you do this one mistake, they the penalty is the cost of your investment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 150K, it could be. Yeah, 150K, that would suck. <laughs> yeah, so we only learned this because we, we interviewed the guys and we got all this information and yeah. we asked these questions. Yeah. So don't do that by yourself. It's going to be a horrible idea. <laughs> Some of the other things like the marriage visa and stuff, you need to get a lot of documents sent over, apostol, translated. It's just like... I don't know who wants that headache, right. man. Yeah. Uh, Squishy Plum with another yeah, $5. Yeah, thanks, dollar. Squishy. It's, a fa- um, it's farmland in Colombia. Is it a hard? Oh, oh, it's farmland in Colombia. I'll translate for you, yeah, even sorry. though it's in English. <laughs> Is farmland in Colombia easy or hard to buy? Um, it's easy to buy if you've got the money. Okay. <laughs> like anything in Colombia. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's, I've never bought land, but I have friends that have bought land here and, and built on it. And buying the land is pretty easy. It's a very similar process as to buying real estate here. Um, you know, there's a, 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 you'll need a real estate attorney or it's highly recommended that you use one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not too hard. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of land for sale out here. Okay. Kent Covington, he's been following me for a while. Let's he watches go, all our stuff. He says, uh, thanks for the great content and for giving back to the community. And he gives us $9.99. Thank you, Thank you, Kent. What a legend. And legend. Uh, thanks for following us along on this journey. And I uh, hope we've helped you with that content as yeah. well along the way. Appreciate I'm going to do boom, boom, boom. Quick questions, yeah. right? Uh, Isaac Rodriguez says, I'm going to ask you these questions. You answer. Okay. Yeah. Rapid fire. Does 3K a month a good amount to live over there? Yes, it's more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Yeah. Uh, this one's for me. He says, uh, Xavier says, how do you compare Brazil to Colombia? Ooh. I love Brazil. Mm-hmm. I think they're very, very friendly, amazing place, very diverse, lots to do. But I didn't get the full experience because I don't speak yeah. Portuguese. Right. Maybe if I spoke, spoke Portuguese, I would have as much fun there as I did in Colombia. Yeah. But unfortunately, not yet. I want to learn next year, but not yet. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Warren Kenner, he said, could you go there, stay in a digital nomad visa and save up for an investment in the meantime? You guys keep saying the digital nomad visa doesn't count towards residency. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the time that you spend here on a digital nomad visa won't go towards your residency. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's a good question. Will it mess up your chances to invest? It will. um, And the answer is yes. And why is that? It's because there's a certain... uh, 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 So we won't. Actually, you can invest... But if you want to get an investment visa, there's a certain process you have to follow that will that you can't do if you've been in the country for a whole year. That kind of excludes you. Yeah. If yeah. you want more information, many yeah. in masterclass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Many in masterclass for that because it, get, it it gets a little. Um, you it's could get in the weeds there. Yeah. Um, but the I guess the main answer is yes. It will screw with your opportunity of getting an investor visa. So you want to make sure that you. Plan that out right. Mm-hmm. EST, safest area in Poblado. Uh, safest area in Poblado? Police would... station. <laughs> Police station. <laughs> They're not even safe, I don't think. <laughs> no, um, I would say, I mean, the whole of Poblado is pretty safe. I, I guess the unsafest area would be right on Calle 10. Parque Lleras, yeah. And, yeah. Well, Parque Lleras is safe. Have you seen the map it's, of it's, the... It's bordered off by Okay, police. okay. But... I've seen the little map of the hot zones. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I've seen And that. then it's like green is good. Red is bad. Yeah. And then it's like all the north and all those hoods is like red. And Poblado is completely green. Yeras, red. Yeah. So <laughs> like that area around Parque Lleras could be dangerous. And the, when I say dangerous, it's basically like pickpocketing is happening there. Um, there's really no armed robberies there because there's always police presence. But um, getting pickpocketed there is common. Yeah. You know, coming out of a, of a bar drunk yeah. at three in the morning getting drugged yeah getting drugged uh, that's happening at people's houses yeah. <laughs> not, not on the street but i have heard it also happens there too oh really like yeah. on the street on the street sometimes depending who you're hanging out with I yeah guess, yeah yeah. Um, yeah i mean parque Yeras is cool to go walk through but i'm i don't really hang out there i would no need i mean i've been here for 13 years so i don't really want to hang out there but i guess <laughs> if i were a tourist and i was brand new i would want to check it out yeah and see what the whole hoopla is yeah, about. yeah yeah just walk past and have a look yeah. at what's happening yeah. um squishy plums again Thank you Thank again you. for the dono. Five bucks right there. He said, I have a permanent grill. Is it safe to walk around Medellin with gold te- teeth? 
I would say so because they're not uh, yeah. really going to steal that from you. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen anybody with gold teeth here. First of all, so I don't know how <laughs> okay. a local will react to that. Yeah, like, and it's not something that they can grab like a gold chain. But like, if you have gold teeth, does that mean that you also wear like gold chains, a uh, nice yeah. watch? Yeah, three hundred dollar Jordans. Good. That's not good. We said that about that. Three hundred dollar Jordans are fine because you can buy Jordans at Centra for five bucks. Yeah, and you can't, and tell, you the can't tell the difference. Can't yeah. tell the difference there. They're but doing that well. What I'm saying well. is that yeah. the, if someone has a gold grill. It can come along with other expensive That's or true. lavish That's things true. that could yeah. be considered giving papaya. I don't know who doesn't know this by now. We've said this in so many videos, but if you wanna if you wanna travel and wear gold chains and flash the diamond encrusted Rolex and stuff, Medellin is not the place for you. Yeah, it's, it's not, not going to end well. Yeah, it's not a good place to do that. There are places and times you can do that here, mm -hmm. but for the most part, if you are a traveler, or let's say a person that likes to walk a lot, someone that likes to get within, you know, get a feel for the city by walking through it and getting on local transportation, yeah. Yeah, it's not the bright place it's, for it's, that. I, I used to think that if you wear all this gold chain and stuff, but you just go from Uber to your house to like a bar and then from the bar back, it could be okay, but it's actually it's not, not okay because yeah. you actually had a story about yeah. that too so yeah um yeah uh, at the bar that i go to um recently like a month ago a guy went in there with a gun and robbed a guy that was giving papaya he basically was there all weekend going to that same bar um he had a ten thousand dollar chain on with like a big words <laughs> like uh, that it was like uh, his daughter's name okay. encrusted in like diamonds. It was okay. like ten thousand dollars. And someone chain. saw him from this and and a thirty thousand oh, dollar Rolex. Damn. And the guy had been there since Friday, and it was Monday. I had gone in there for Monday night football, and that's and I left the bar um, to go home because it was like ten thirty. It was a blowout game, and when one of the one of the waitresses runs after me and says, "Andrew, Andrew," I'm like, "What did I leave?" I'm like touching my pockets. I'm like, "I got my phone, my wallet," and she's like. Somebody just walked in there with a gun and is robbing the place. And I'm like, this what? is why I was just in there. <laughs> and then uh, lo and behold, like the guy left, um, the, the police came and everything. But uh, after I heard the story, the guy had been there all weekend wearing mm -hmm. the same watch, the same chain, talking big numbers because he's trying to buy the bar from the owners. Yeah. Being super American. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, somebody tailed him. Somebody uh, saw him. Uh, so they also arrested the person that tipped off the robbers. The person that tipped off the robbers is one of the guys that sells flowers outside on Calle Diez that had seen him all week and uh, all weekend and co contacted the guys. And you can see him on the video camera and the security footage of him talking to the robbers before they robbed. Oh, yeah. So, so he it was, was a arrested setup for as sure. well. It was yeah. definitely. So that kind of shit happens when you keep going to the same place and you're wearing like expensive stuff and someone's looking out and they know your next move. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like uh, the. The, the fourth, ninth state, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but he says, I've been going everywhere with gold chains, never a problem. It's not a problem until it is a problem, right? Yeah, it's And in, in Cartagena, there was a guy who unfortunately lost his life about a month ago. Oh, yeah. And the only reason they robbed him was because of his chain. Yeah. They robbed and, him for his gold chain. And he didn't want to give it up. And he resisted. They shot him. They shot him. They yeah. don't care about that. Yeah, shit remember either. here, there is no life in jail, in prison. Uh, 45 years is the max. And if you get 45 years... A lot of people only do 15 of those years for murder. This is for murder. Yeah. Um, so killing someone here, uh, the co cost of, I guess the value on life is less here than in the U.S. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, when you watch people drive, you'll understand that. So <laughs> long story short, I personally, if you ask me, I would say don't wear any of that stuff. Yeah. But if you want to, you're That's putting it. yourself at risk. It's your life. <laughs> um, all right. So let's see. What else? Sebastian says. Um, the peso need to go up. Yeah, it's been getting bazookaed lately. Uh, well, oh I've goodness. got pretty good inside source. Well, it's not an inside source. It's you just, get the inside trading no, tip. No, a, a people that um, I'm in a group of people that are investors, and they um, they presume that by this time next year, so in a year from now, mm -hmm. uh, the the peso will be closer to six thousand. What? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the uh, that's, that's because of the things that are happening with oil. Okay. Uh, politics. Okay. Uh, Etc. So that's what I've heard. I don't really care if it goes up and down. I'm, I'm chilling. 
all these people care watching. <laughs> it's going to be getting twenty five percent. Talking to myself right now. <laughs> They're going to be getting twenty five percent, thirty percent more value for their money, dude. True, Come on, true. <laughs> just because you're 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 doing <laughs> uh, CBL Daddy fireworks in Medellin. Let's go CBL Every Darwin. Day. <laughs> I may be out there for the holidays. Oh, nice, Darwin. Yes, holidays almost the finished. Buddha says DC Rob had a video live stream with a guy getting scoped at a sidewalk table. An outlier, but yeah. just keep track of surroundings. Yeah. And do- yeah, and he was also with two prostitutes. I saw that video. <laughs> That's not <laughs> like, an outlier. That's <laughs> doing dumb shit. Come on, man. Two prostitutes in, in Cartagena. Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. Uh, what's up, uh, <laughs> Sima, Kama? C- what, Canada? Is that- what language are you speaking? Sure, Andrew. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Uh, JJM director. I've never understood men wearing jewelry. Uh, men wearing jewelry? <laughs> I mean, it's like kind of gone the, like through the history of man. Do you have anything um, pierced? No, no. No, me neither. No. I never got into that trend. Nope. I mm. don't have anything pierced. I don't have any tattoos either. I I do. I could have gotten some prison tattoos, <laughs> but I never got them. <laughs> There's a little sailor uh, sailing thing there. Yeah, Anchor. Like for, for you, like your tattoos look really cool, and they probably all have a lot of meaning. Yeah. Because uh, you could tell that they have meaning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, if I were to get a tattoo, it would have to be like super meaningful. Could be your child's my name. My child's name right yeah. across. Or well, maybe get a, a chain with the name like this. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone called you forty-two-year-old virgin. Forty-two-year-old <laughs> <laughs> is correct. Virgin, while well, he's having a kid. I am a virgin. So he's yeah. an immaculate conception. Uh, yeah. My, I'm, oh my uh, god. My child's gonna be the next. Uh, <laughs> I don't know oh what to my say. God. Um, uh, I, yeah, I've never understood people wearing jewelry um, in Colombia. Like, I, I don't understand people coming here and wanting to flash jewelry uh, or in any developing nation for that matter. Yeah. Like, you can go to any developing nation. Obviously, there are places like in... I would feel bad. Like, if I were to go, go to, like, to, let's say, the Philippines, yeah. where the crime rates l- might be low or... L- I don't know. I'm just naming off whatever. Let's say South Africa. South Africa, where... where is that a developing nation? Yeah. So uh, it's a developing nation and maybe like the crime rates were low. I would feel bad walking around with expensive ass shit when everyone else is eating out the fucking garbage can, yeah, right? Like that's true. why would I do that you know morally and spiritually? I would feel like crap. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I, don't I don't have anything either. So I'm not Hey, sure. Taco filling with the 2022. <laughs> There's people in their names. Taco filling. Oh, <laughs> hilarious. How do people We got squishy plums and taco fillings and Taco filling says making what? me hungry. What if you're walking around on Mania or good parts of Medellin, boots, cargo pants, a t-shirt, probably safe to walk or necessary to drive everywhere? I don't know well, how. You'll be like, a, I, I don't know you'll how. Be roasting in that. Boots I, don't, and car- I don't know how boots and cargo pants and a t-shirt are yeah. giving papaya. That's the opposite. Yeah. That's like, I'm ready yeah, for. Yeah, you're fine with so, that, yeah, but you're going to yeah. be so hot. Yeah. You're maybe you're not in Armenia, maybe. Uh, maybe not, not in Armenia. Yeah. But, but, that's fine. You can do that. Yeah, you can be course. fine. You'll be fine, yeah. taco filling. What's um, what? Yeah. But that's like the, yeah, that's. That's fine, but I think you'll get more um, of the sense of the Colombian fashion, or at least the paisa fashion, once yeah. you get down here. T-shirt and jeans. T-shirt and jeans is completely fine. Like, yeah. T-shirt and jeans, walking around any neighborhood, you'll be fine. Um, well, not any neighborhood. But yeah. <laughs> uh, Kama's commenting many random things. I have no idea what he's talking about. Do you? What? He said, Mrs. Lizzo, big girls will give it to any guy. Uh, Do you have an inside joke going with this guy? I have no idea. <laughs> what the hell is that going on? <laughs> All right, let's get to number six. Okay, yes. Are we done with visas? Anyone yeah. have any questions on visas? Yeah, if you have questions Drop about them visas, here, yeah, um, go ahead. And then let's answer some questions. Let's leave it open for visas. Um, let's close visas. Make sure you guys are happy with that before next we move to thing. the next one. But you got some more questions here. Okay, yeah, Christopher Oh, says, wife and two kids. That's exciting. What? Christopher says... I'm going to ask you the question. Okay. Thinking of visiting Medellin for a week with my wife and two kids who okay. are two years old and four years old. That's nice. very cute. Limited Spanish. Is this a good idea? Bad idea? We do stuff during the day and chill at a hotel during the night. Wow. Yeah. That sounds like a great plan. You, you have a lot of things to do. A lot of people don't realize that Medellin is pretty family friendly. And when I, what I mean by that is that there are a lot of activities and places that you go with your kids. Yeah. It's not like Disneyland or whatever, but yeah. there are places, for example, like Parque Explora, the Botanical Garden... Uh, El Tesoro Mall is like a, has a lot of little like Ferris wheels and and, mm-hmm. and things for the kids to do. Uh, right now, there's an ice rink in the middle of of Santa Fe. Yep. Um, there it's, are, it looks good over there. Yeah. So uh, a lot a lot of this surrounds around malls as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's like Colombian culture to go to malls. We spoke about it in a couple of videos. So many families are coming here. Yeah. So yeah. It's no people. longer like needs to be. Also, if you look at all the stats of people 
coming in trouble. Mm-hmm. None of them are families. Yeah, yeah. None of never, them are women. Yeah, you never hear of a family getting scoped. No. <laughs> so, uh, by Families are hopefully not hanging out with prostitutes and the parqueeras. <laughs> well, we wanted want someone to take care of our kid. We thought we'd grab one off the street. Cheap labor. <laughs> yeah, that has, not, that has That has not happened. <laughs> <laughs> hey, T Mac with the nine ninety nine. What's yeah. good? Uh, T Mac says I heard that near Unicentro. Yeah. That a robber with a fake gun was beat to death about a month ago. Have you uh, witnessed, witnessed vigilance? Vi- uh, yes, I have. <laughs> I saw a video about this, and it was very tough to watch. It is hard to watch. They absolutely. So someone, uh, they do this a lot in Colombia because they they don't want people to do this shit. I saw this video mm-hmm. that someone came past and tried to snatch like a bag from a woman wow, on yeah. a motorbike, yeah. and then other people saw. So two guys in like motors chased him. Wow. Someone in a car was trying to hit him, Whoa. and this guy jumped off. And basically, immediately, it was like ten guys getting onto him yeah. on the ground hitting and booting him in the face and it was just blood everywhere wow. and then the police comes up and the guy booting was like hey what up what's happening <laughs> <laughs> just chilling nothing happening and all the people like old people kids going to school and stuff walking on the way and they're just oh another guy getting bashed whatever wow so yeah. it's like yeah they'll fuck you up yeah there yeah there's vigilante justice because people are just fed up with the justice system here yeah. because that person if that doesn't happen to that person they don't get beat up They'll go to jail for the day, mm-hmm. and then the next day they're free. And that happens because the only way for them to get uh, time or be charged with anything is for someone to uh, denounce them, yeah. do the denuncia. Yeah. And most people will not denounce them if they were the victim of a crime because they don't know if this guy's a gang member from mm-hmm. some hood out here, and then they're going to come back and kill him after they get out of jail or yeah. one of his family. Because like, that, that could happen. So. So a lot of people just don't even, you know, file the report and they get out the next day and yeah. they go on with robbing again. Yeah, but that's yeah. just one video I saw, but it, it happens a lot. Yeah, they don't yeah. play around, man. They they want to k- clean up their streets. They yeah. don't want this stuff happening. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we have a good question by from Eric about visas. What about the visa uh what about the visa for getting your girlfriend over there? Long process? Over here, he said. To yeah. where? So Eric, I'm assuming you're Colombian or you or you're um yeah, where are oh, you? Oh, is he your, from the US? I want to get his girlfriend. Why are you to the bringing US? why are you bringing sand to the beach? First of all. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all. <laughs> Please clarify. I don't understand. <laughs> Ed <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, clarify. Are you bringing your girlfriend from the United States here and you are Colombian? Because that's usually the fastest way for someone to get their visa or residency here is to marry into, you know, Colombia, basically. Yeah. Um uh, what about Budget for visa lawyer first year. What's the budget for a visa lawyer? Yeah. That's a good question. What's yeah. the, what would be a, a you, reasonable you, budget? A reasonable budget about three hundred to five hundred dollars, depending on what type of visa you want. Not so not yeah. so bad, considering they're lawyers. Bad. Yeah, considering how much are they charge? Hopefully, get it done. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, shout out to the. Um, Eamon says, shout out to Tomas at at, at Nexo Legal. Yes. Yeah, shout good out guy. Good yeah. guy. Who said that? Uh, Eamon. Oh, how does he know Tomas? Eamon de Cuba. Yeah, Tomas, awesome guy. He's actually the one that helped us with our immigration yeah. on our um, oh, really? masterclass. Yeah. Oh, nice. Great guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I thought you meant Eamon. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, he did not help us. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the best vegan restaurant in Medellin? Go. Uh, best vegan restaurant in Medellin. Uh, shoot. See, the, th- the thing is that I uh, when I order, I order vegan stuff from non Okay. Vegan restaurants, but the best vegan restaurant I would say is Vegan and Veggie. In, okay, in, that's a good in, one in Manila. That's my favorite, um, but it's not like where I go all the time. Okay, because I do like other dishes from other restaurants that have vegan dishes, which mm. is great. Okay, yeah. Um, what about you? Do you have a go-to? I like uh, this place over there in um, Paulado. It's called. It's called uh, where they have the pizzas and they have the live music. Um, uh, Zorba? Zorba. I like oh. that one. Best vegan pizza in oh, Medellin. I Maybe just, in the world that I've had. Bro, I, we, I have one right. Have you been to El Lecho right here downstairs? The sushi place? Yeah. Yeah. That really place. good too. They have such good, they yeah. have like a little curry soup there. Yeah. They've got wonton soup, but it's all vegan. There's a vegan lot of vegan sushi, places here. I don't, uh, yeah. Uh, when I tell people, oh, it's vegan sushi, they're like, the hell yeah, because it sounds like what? just avocado and rice. Yeah, <laughs> but when you go there, it's literally gotten awards for yeah. being. They're very the creative best with what they do. In yeah. Medellin. Yeah. yeah, a lot of fusion and, and it's different cheap. stuff. Yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's getting to a point now with a lot of tourists that 
most places they have at least one vegan place. We even went with our masterclass group yeah. uh, uh, like a month ago to a traditional Colombian restaurant. Yeah, Ato, and, Ato, Viejo. Ato Viejo, and even there they have a vegan vegan yeah, dishes. A, couple, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's Medellin come a long way. Yeah, and we're going places. Um, you want to take some more questions, or should yeah, we? Yeah, we have another question, a good one. Um, well, I don't know the answer to this. We, I don't think you have veneers, but how mm. much are veneers there? No idea. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Cheaper got, than the U.S. I, this, this tooth is fake because it got it, it broke off years ago, and I got it fixed here. Yeah, um, because it was like well, over ten years, yeah. and I had it so. That was like pennies on the dollar. Like T Max says, I brought my wife and her eleven year old daughter to Medellin last year. What do they think? What did your eleven year eleven uh, year old daughter think of Medellin? Did yeah, she that'd be enjoy it? Did she feel unsafe? Did she have good activities to do here? Yeah, it's interesting. I never really thought about it. But yeah. yeah, cost of teeth whitening. Have you ever gotten your teeth whitened here? Only with um, Colgate teeth whitening toothpaste. Yeah, that's the one I used to. Yeah, yeah, the one in the red. Uh huh. Yeah, I love that. That's a good. Uh, it really bottle. works yeah. too. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, and my teeth are pretty white. Yours yeah. are super white. Yeah, it's because I'm yeah. not. Because I'm dark. It's good contrast. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get to number six since no one else had any questions yeah, about... Yeah, so visas, yeah. taking care of visas was number five. Number six, what would be the number six thing for you to do that you could probably start, yeah, you can start getting back arranged home. back home without even having to be in Medellin? Yeah, I would start looking for activities that I want to do okay. and connecting with people, like-minded people um, who like to do these activities too. So I automatically I'm not getting to the city and be like, oh, what do I do now? I might even have Tuesday night, I found this event, event Thursday this event, yeah. Saturday this event, let's go. Yeah. You can even join the WhatsApp groups and talk to the people there and make friends before, you're alive, uh, uh, before you before arrive. Before you arrive. Before, <laughs> <laughs> before you arrive because, yeah, that's what makes a city. Isn't that right, Andrew? It's not like the place or the cost of living or whatever. It's the type of people that you meet there and connect yeah. with and grow. Yeah, I've heard this so many times from people uh, on both ends. Mm -hmm. One is that they didn't like their stay in Medellin. And this is the very few times that I've heard this, that someone doesn't like Medellin. And it's valid. I mean, not everybody's going to like it, but more people like it than not. But some of the people that have said that they didn't like Medellin and they left is because they couldn't find their tribe or have connections with people, yep. deeper connections. Um, and usually it was, uh, and usually that's tied to them not learning the language and hence not being able to make friends real friends that yeah. don't just want money from you mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Um, <laughs> or friends that uh, live here. Friends that don't just come for a couple of weeks and go a couple yeah, of years. Because yeah, I lived that life for, for a long time. I, I lived in a hostel yeah. in Mexico for six months. And it was great, but it would just be, oh, I met this person, had a great connection, they leave in a week. Yeah. Next person, same stories, same shit all right. the time, right? Yeah. So if you meet people that live here, then it's, it's a lot better. Right. Yeah, it's way better. Um, and uh, another fault that they have also is that they don't get out of their little bubble like mm. and it's usually like the poblado bubble yeah where you know all they do is just live their life and usually these people either work from home or are retired or early retirees and then they go to the bar at night and that's the only people they hang out with um and they don't have any local connections so no. it's really hard to really enjoy the place when you don't have friends so the best way to make friends here in my opinion has been through activities like uh some of my best colombian friends uh i met through playing basketball here yeah in basketball tournaments being on basketball teams um some of the best friends i've met here also was when i was a teacher uh which are still my friends and uh, a couple of them i employ uh they are um i met them while i was teaching we were colleagues and we just are basically lifelong friends yeah um yeah so doing stuff within the community whether it's activities or even just getting a local job even or volunteering yeah that's mine, really mine, mine the same too like yeah. i met a lot of mates from playing tennis and um even at the gym sometimes and yeah. uh volunteering and everything like that but a big hurdle that you guys might encounter depending on which country you're from but um, most countries it might be weird to just speak to someone a stranger immediately and say what are you doing? Where yeah. you from? Want to be friends? Doing? Yeah, want to be friends? <laughs> want to be friends, or you want to hang when out? You used to do that when you were kids. when you were a kid. Yeah, and yeah. isn't it weird that it used to be completely normal when we were kids, and then somehow through society, it's like don't do that, <laughs> don't talk to people, just look yeah. down and keep walking. Yeah, it's not like that at all here. Yeah, it's you, not. And Medellin and Colombian people as a whole, as someone had mentioned, are untrusting uh, to each other. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a Colombian, you kind of usually like you've got your guard up to other Colombians that are going to try to help you and stuff because you don't want to get scammed. You know, yeah. it's, it's a country where, you know, a lot of the population are in poverty and they're trying to come up some way. Mm. So they're going to try to get over on you. 
Um, so people do have their guard up, but when it's a foreigner, they love it. They welcome it with open arms because yeah. they can't believe that a foreigner would come down here to just scam them. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And so so it's a lot of uh, it's a different reception to that type of person coming in. Yeah, to like a group or or to yeah. Uh, but they are very clicky here. Yeah, I'm like, gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you a story to say this point about how easy it is to m- meet people here, especially if you're a good person and you're doing the right things, right? Yeah. So I don't know about the US, how it is. Um, Australia, this would be impossible. This would never happen, right? Right. So Raj, we keep going back to Raj because he's been here three weeks. He's basically done everything. He's just yeah. full <laughs> head on, learning Spanish, meeting people, going to language changes twice a week, volunteering. This guy's basically done something every single day, yeah. going hard in Medellin, yeah. right? Yeah. He told me the other day he was at uh, in Poblado on a date and uh, he was just, he's a very talkative social person. So he was just chatting with the waiter. You know, most people with waiters, it's like, give me this, fuck off. Yeah. He was like, hey, what are you doing? How's your day going? How's it? Blah, blah. Just making chit chat yeah, with him, friend, trying yeah. to speak Spanish because he's learning Spanish. And this waiter asked him, hey, Mr. Raj, the waiter in the end spoke English. So he said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, <laughs> I could just imagine Raj, like sweating bullets trying to express himself in Spanish. And this and guy like, just oh. <laughs> speaks fluent English. So anyway, he's like, Mr. Raj, uh, he called him Mr. Raj, which is kind of cute as well. Mr. Raj, what are you doing for Christmas? And he's like, oh, I don't really know. I haven't really thought about it, but I don't have any plans. He's like, so you don't know anyone here you can spend Christmas with? He's like, no, a couple of my friends, but they're going to be out of town. He said, like, I'm, I'll be out of here and stuff. So he said, that's not acceptable. You're in my country. I want to make it a nice time for you. I personally am inviting you to my family's Christmas barbecue. Wow. And I'm not taking no for an answer. Here's the number. Wow. You have to come. I don't want you to be here in my that's country and cool. alone on Christmas. And, alone, and you yeah. seem like a nice guy, so you have to come. That so that's what he's so doing for Christmas. Cool. That's <laughs> awesome, man. <I laughs> Would that happen go. ever in the US? Uh, no, I mean, it could, but... I mean, maybe in places like the, in the South, okay. where people are super... Like where, like Georgia or something? Yeah, Louisiana, Georgia, okay. at, you know, uh, Atlanta, I would like to do that. Like that. That'll in be California, fun. probably not unless if it were like other Hispanics or, uh-huh. or Filipinos are super... Yeah. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I walked into a Filipino's house that were doing karaoke or like singing and yeah. they love that stuff. Yeah. And they would just invite me in to yeah. eat and stuff. And yeah. it was like in my neighborhood. Yeah, I, That would... So, but Filipino is a different story. Yeah, though. that's yeah. a whole different story. Yeah, but that's an awesome story. That's yeah. a great story. Yeah. That that can actually happen here in Medellin. It's yeah. even happened to me so many times where I just yeah. met someone once. They're like, "Hey, I got this event. Come, I want to show you around. I yeah. want to show you this. That I love it. I want to show you a bit about my country, my city. Um, let's do it." And usually, I'm just like, "I like new experiences. I'm like, whatever. Right. Let's do yeah. it." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think um, it could, it can happen in the U.S., um, but it's cool that it happens here um, often, especially for foreigners. Because, yeah. You know, even though Medellin has had their best year for tourism this year um it's still very virgin i would say a lot of people here don't have a lot of interaction with foreigners so Mm -hmm. when they do meet someone even though that guy was probably a waiter and he spoke english yeah and he's probably having interactions with uh foreigners all the time he was still like yeah you need to but i think it also helped that raj was a different type of foreigner yeah he's not like yeah he he, he was very friendly he, he, he that waiter works in the most busy part of Poblado, which probably a lot of people don't speak in English, just doing Google Translate to him. Yeah. Uh, don't speak Spanish or don't even try, even though he spoke English. But yeah. Raj was trying to speak Spanish, trying to fit in, asking him questions about his life and stuff. So that also helps. That always goes back to what I said, what we said in point three, learn Spanish because people will take to you more kindly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, EST says that shit don't happen in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Wait, wasn't that? Uh, I remember I, during Thanksgiving, it always comes up a story where this uh, mom uh, from a white family, she's a white lady, she was texting her, her, her family members and she accidentally texted a black guy, said, hey, you know, uh, Thanksgiving at my house on uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, this Thursday or whatever, um, see you there. And then the black guy responded like, I don't know you, but can I get a dish? <laughs> can I get a plate? <laughs> it's been going on for like eight years he, that he, he goes to he goes there. to their family. Are you talk, I think they were from this Georgia. sounds like the script of The Blind Side. <laughs> no, I haven't <laughs> seen that movie, you know. But yeah, that's, isn't okay. that Blind Side from Georgia too? <laughs> uh, or, or they're in the South somewhere. Yeah, they're in yeah, the, they're the, south, in the south, south somewhere. Yeah, he's from Mississippi, actually. Oh, Mississippi, Mississippi, yeah. Mississippi okay. Okay. Ole Miss he went yeah. to. Gabo, side. thank you so much for the $4 donor. Yeah, Appreciate thank you, Gabo it. Chanusa. Chanusa, Chanusa. Uh, we got many people talking here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the Marvelous 16 said, collab with the Nomad Capitalist. He has a huge channel, but if you can 
get me connected with him, I'd love to do it. But he's probably going to say, who oh, the hell is the this man? guy? Nomad Capitalist? Oh. Yeah, I think oh, he's I like over 100,000 or 200,000 yeah. views. He talks got a lot of good information. Got a lot of good yeah. information about all around the world yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, D State. I'm just going to call him D State because I don't know how to pronounce yeah. this name. He said, I love, I think he's Colombian. Are you Colombian, D State? He says, I love to buy and pay for strangers. Things for like strangers? groceries oh. and pastries. Oh, yeah, like nice. when, when you're out in the street. Yeah, yeah. like I, I've done that often where you, you know, like the family is asking for coins outside okay. the grocery store. Yeah. You, you ask them what they need and you just buy it for them. Yeah. yeah, ESD has a good one here. Are local friend groups cool with including a foreigner into their hangouts activities for the most part? Once again, it depends who you are, right? Yeah. Yeah, a story that so. happened to me as well. The first days I got here, I was staying in an Airbnb with a couple yeah. and uh, it was the girl's birthday in a couple of days. Yeah. And she said, hey, my, I'm going to have my birthday. You should come. So I went along and it was just like those two and maybe like 10 Colombians and oh, they're all very cool. welcoming. Yeah. They asked me what I'm doing in the city, gave me tips, gave me contacts. Yeah. So yeah, they are in my, in my experience anyway, they've been really good. Yeah, that's, a, that's awesome. Yeah, so yeah, so that's the, the, one of the things that you can do, even if you're not in Colombia, in Medellin, you can start seeking these groups out for the things that you love to do. If you like to volunteer, look, look up uh, volunteer groups on Facebook, the, yeah. on the MDE community. If you like to play chess, there's a chess group. Start mm -hmm. con connecting with those people, uh, et cetera, so that when you get down here, you hit the ground running instead of just being alone and lonely because that's usually one of the reasons why people don't people like leave. Uh, being here is yeah. because they feel lonely. And it's a valid point, but you got to work at it, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just going to happen. People aren't just going to fall out from trees here just to be like your friend, right? You actually have to <laughs> you gotta work, do yeah. some work. You got to put yourself in the correct situations <laughs> to make friends. Yeah. If you just sit at home, watch Netflix, right. and nobody showing up to your door being like, let's hang out. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not anyway. That'd <laughs> <Yeah>. be weird. <laughs> Warren Kenner has a good question. He says, I'm going to ask you, Andrew, okay. what do you think about some of the biggest cultural differences between uh, Colombia and um, maybe the US? Uh, he's seen... Yeah, what's that's a that's a question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm confused. No, no, well, I, biggest I cultural it. differences. Yeah, Tell what, me. What You're Colombian you as well, so yeah, you, you so even more. I had a I had a rough time. My first uh, like my first four years here was rough for a few reasons. Number one was that I was broke. I was deported from the United States in 2010. Got here with no money, no friends, and no family. So I had to do all this shit that we're telling you to do right now. I'm telling you for a reason. Because when I got here, I had none of that shit planned, and it was rough. It was rough being alone, um, not having money, not uh, knowing anybody or having any connections to even just get a job. I had to get a local job at a call center, which was the worst job I've ever had in my life. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Um, People telling yeah, you, yeah, telling you to fuck off in the U.S. <laughs> because it was an yeah, English-speaking yeah. call center. Damn. So. so uh, what was the question? Oh, the culture clash. Culture, so, yeah. So the culture clashes hit me even harder because. If you've got money, those culture clashes can kind of go away. Like, for example, uh, a big culture clash is driving and public transportation, right? Like in the United States, it's le at least in Southern California, where I'm from, um, you know, you don't take the bus very often. Mm. I, I could probably count on my hand how many times <laughs> it's I Because it's horrible. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad system. Yeah. The, the streets are ginormous. Just to get to one place to another could be like... 15 minutes in a car, 20 minutes or an hour in a car. And if there's traffic, it could be two hours. Yeah. Um, so everyone has a car out there. So you're never on public transportation. You're never surrounded by people, really. So a big culture clash here for me was I didn't have a car. I didn't have much money. So I had to take the public buses when I worked in uh, downtown. Um, and those buses get full to the brim at yeah. peak hours. It's a it's it's a cool experience at the beginning but once you get used to it you're like oh my god i need to get the fuck out you're of like here. nose to nose with someone you, else literally like nuts to butts <laughs> <laughs> nuts to butts everybody's and everyone's like cool with it or they're kind of squirming like no, this everyone's a bit? like normal okay. like that, that and that's that, leaning into it that's part of that culture clash not only is transportation crazy and the way people drive crazy but on top of that everybody is like super cool with being very close to each other, no personal space. Okay. Um, and when you don't have money, you have to live with that, and then you get used to it. That's yeah. what happened to me. I got used to it. I got so used to it that I moved downtown, and I lived there for a year and a half. Okay. Um, so that's the biggest So, yeah, clash. that was a big culture clash. But like I said, if you come down here and do all this planning like that we're telling you right now to do, those culture clashes will be minimal um, and, and affect you in a minimal way, I guess. Yeah. 
there's been nothing really that shocking to me here. Yeah, because you've been to like I've a thousand countries. been to many countries, countries yeah, yeah. Um, if I'm thinking if I come directly yeah, like from if you've a, never been, never anywhere, been else. anywhere and just arrived here, yeah. yeah, that would be one one big one for sure. Um, but we have some more questions. Let's, yes, sir. let's lead with the very... Yes, thank you so much for the $5 dono. Keep it up. Unknown with a good question. I'll let you answer that because you live in Ma- Laureles. Yeah. Unknown asks, I'm, he says, I'm moving to Laureles next month. Any safety tips? Let's group this in with another question we got from sure. Giddy Up. He Giddy said, up. Uh, some are saying Medellin is too dangerous now, drugging, etc." Okay, I want to answer this question once and once only because people ask me this all the time people leaving comments saying don't go to colombia how can you be promoting colombia as a destination yeah. people are coming and dropping like flies and dying <laughs> immediately off the airport you'll die it's yeah. not true like come on man like stop believing everything you read in the news yeah or at least of- ask some more questions yeah. read the articles understand why these things are happening right yeah. if i told you um in California, right? This, remember, I'll tell you this, right? You saw an article, Andrew, and the article said 30 people murdered in California in December. Yeah. As a tourist, would you be worried? Uh, no. No, because it's California. No, it's never said. Uh, I mean... Okay, if, uh, I said uh, if I said 100 people murdered, would you say? Yeah, then I'd be like, oh You'd be God. concerned, all right? Yeah. But if you read that all those 100 people were gang trying to buy... Or, gang members? Yeah. Would you be worried? No. This yeah, is the questions we need to be asking, thing, yeah. right? Ask what type of people have been getting killed here. So, yes, uh, Medellin as a whole is unsafe compared to a first world country like yeah. the United States, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Australia. Um, and it's definitely not a destination where you can be as free with your, you know, where, what you wear mm-hmm. and how you flaunt yourself out here. Uh, as you know, you would in those countries. So, yes, I absolutely agree. Medellin can be unsafe. Yes, and it's it definitely it's it's definitely unsafe if you do certain things. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. You'll be a victim and eventually. Even if you don't do certain things, yeah. the likelihood of you getting robbed here is probably higher than that of like living in a, Melbourne, a Australia. Suburb, yeah, a suburb yeah, in absolutely. Australia. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But obviously, those chances reduce where, depending on where you live. Yeah. Depending on how you carry yourself. Depending on who you hang out yeah, with. Depending, depending on what, what you do. What you do. So yeah. safety tips about moving to Laureles? Uh, I would say, let's talk about just general safety. Um, is just like, one of my mates today, I was supposed to meet up with him to play tennis. I text him, he texts me at 7.30, are we playing today? Yeah. I text him at 9 saying, yes, let's play at 10. Then he doesn't respond for like eight hours. I'm like, holy shit, what happened to this yeah. guy? He messages me at like four o'clock saying, sorry, my phone got stolen. I said, what happened? Stolen? Were they, did they bring a gun? What happened? I was worried for him. Yeah. And he said, no, look, it was my mistake. I was standing at the traffic light texting and they came by in a moto and robbed yeah. me. And he's Colombian. Yeah, that's the most common <laughs> that's type the most of common. crime yeah. that happens here, which is like this petty theft, yeah. like pickpocketing or just uh, grabbing on the moto snatching. quickly. Yeah, 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 snatching. So number one tip is don't be walking around with your phone on the street. Yeah, yeah. That's and you'll see, and, and this is another really good tip is when you come down here, look at what the locals are doing. Yeah, but don't look at my mate, the local who, who was on the yeah. phone, talking on the phone and getting it stolen. Locals will do this as well. Yeah, yeah. I've seen locals because walking and texting on the street. You get yeah, comfortable yeah. and then you get robbed. Um, yeah. And that happens. So uh, a lot of the times you'll you'll also see no locals with phones out. You know, it, it's so it's just, it's common sense to us because we've been here. Yeah. But to someone that's new, that's not common sense. So hopefully you'll understand that. Yeah. That, you know, uh, t- taking your phone out on the street is not recommended, especially if it's like a busy street. So yeah. literally like it's inherent in me now because I have lived in downtown. I've lived in seven different neighborhoods here. When, if I'm walking down a street, I typically like to walk down streets that where the co- where the traffic is oncoming to me uh-huh. because there's nobody that could co- run up that's behind very, me. Very smart. Too. But that's like something that's like inherent in m- my personality now yeah. it's like it sucks and i understand for those of you that don't like living that way and aren't willing to compensate that to live in medellin then medellin is not for you no because i've had people say you know why would i want to go live in a country where i have to worry about those things you don't, you don't have, have to, to. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't, don't have, have to. to yeah yeah but maybe they were making the uh, it was more of an insinuation up to why are you living in a country where uh-huh. you have to worry about yeah. that yeah for me, because the pros outweigh the cons. Yeah. And so I actually had a very good and constructive conversation with someone on my comments. He said, I'm never coming to Medellin 
why would I want to live in a place where I can't wear, like, can't do the things I want? I said, what type of things do you want to do? He said, oh, I want to wear my chains and my Rolex in the street. I said, <laughs> I said, okay, that's fine. You can do that. But yeah, don't come here. It's not going to end well. But it's, it's fine to want to do those things in yeah. your lives. As it is also very fine to want to, want to text a girl on Tinder, mm. uh, send one message and say, hey, I'm coming over. That's yeah. a fine. If you want to do that, you, you can do, do that. that. But if you want to stay alive, don't do that in Medellin. Do that in Medellin. Right? Yeah. So it's all about, uh, I guess, yeah, figuring out what things are really important to you. Um, if you really need some of those things uh, in Medellin, you got to think up, is it really worth moving here? Right. It's tough. It's tough. Um, but you have to. It's uh, Living in rel- <laughs> Medellin is like a relationship with a woman. Okay. Why? How so? Give and take. Okay. You have to give and you, you'll take, but you also have to give. Uh-huh. And sometimes the giving means that you have to give up some, some stuff. Yeah. Like some, some of your habits and some of the things that make you you sometimes uh, in your country mm. if you want to live here. Uh, until, you get, until you start assimilating. Yeah. Once you're assimilating, you can start incorporating some of your personality into, the, into life here. Um, but yeah, don't get it twisted. We're not trying to say that Medellin is this fucking fairy tale no, place. No, and it can, it can be. It can be. If you are a certain type of person. Yeah. If you're another type of person who likes to do maybe things like this guy was saying, I like to wear my gold chains, a nice watch to go out, then it's not going to be a fairy tale city for it's you. It's not going to be. Yeah. yeah. And um, on top of that, even if it were a safe country, it's still a poor country. So you're not going to, you're not going, even if you live in the nicest neighborhood in El Tesoro up here or in El, El Poblao, uh, anywhere you go, you're going to see poverty. Like, yeah. There's no way around it because the cleaning lady that's coming into your house is probably living uh, you know, below what most people would live in, in the United States or in, yeah. in, in your country. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we have D-State, five buck dono. Thanks, hey, buddy. Thank you. And a little balloon. Thank you. Uh, he said, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are cool. I enjoy watching your channels. He's from Hawaii, by the way. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm retired, but won't won't mind a down for three years or less uh my, my kid needs to finish school first awesome. oh yeah yeah, nice, yeah yeah so he's waiting for his kid to finish school then he's moving down that's yeah. pretty cool i'm very excited to get my uh, like my kid's not even born but i'm already excited about them going to school here and doing stuff yeah that's, that's got that's gonna be awesome uh zombie fart says <laughs> <laughs> where i live you walk around dressed like that uh, we just roll you for principal. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you live, zombie farts? I'll be avoid. Uh, happy, I'm yeah, happy to avoid, avoid that there. place. <laughs> um, um, but Venus yeah, says here's a tip: don't drink and hang out with women who may be prostitutes or unsavory in some way. Yeah, I mean, you can do that. Like for example, I understand if that's what people like to do, and you know, prostitution is one of the oldest uh, professions in the world ever. And um, and if people want to indulge in that, and in Colombia it's legal, so. I can see why people would come to come and do that here. Mm-hmm. But just know that there's a danger attached in Medellin. In yeah. some other countries where it's also legal, it's been, you know, where even the government is Like involved. Amsterdam? Yeah, uh, like places uh, where, where it's legal and it's controlled yeah. and it, it, it's safe. But mm-hmm. in Medellin, even though it's legal, it's still not controlled. Uh, there's not a lot of, you know, control over that. So who you pick up off the street can be someone that's you know from a very poor and dangerous neighborhood yeah. that wants to come up quick and might want to dr- drug you to steal all your shit. We have some a few questions that have popped up over there about dating and things yeah. like that. I would almost go to the point, you probably agree with me, that if you want to come for hookup culture, yeah. don't come to Medellin. Go somewhere else. Yeah, go it's, somewhere it's else. It's not going to end well. It, you're going to have a lot of trouble doing it, first of all. Yeah, for quick hookups. For quick hookups, yeah. it's difficult. Um, and you're going to put yourself in a lot of danger. Most of the people that have been killed have been looking for a quick hookup. Right, so that is yeah dangerous. But, but I think they're they're confusing or they're they're basketing, I guess, or yeah, or, and capturing hookup with prostitution too, but, like but, a quick but, hookup but, for money. Yeah, but yeah, I'm talking hookup as in non-prostitution. Right, yeah. Like you meet a girl on Tinder and yeah. you want to go to a place or invite her over. Yeah, that usually doesn't. Happen. That's that's yeah. and that doesn't end well. Yeah, that's th- usually most of the circumstances that are happening to people. Yeah, 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 but, yeah um, exactly. But in terms of relationships, my best tip would be be patient. Yeah, because um, you can meet someone. Dating app is fine, like maybe Bumble or something yeah, like that. Yeah. You can use. I've used that dating app. Yeah, for years but here. just talk to them first. Don't try and push it to to yeah. sex straight away, um, because usually the ones that are like very keen to do that are the ones, are the gonna ones that are going to do something too. Yeah. yeah. So if you just wait, get to know a bit about them. Maybe organize your first few dates in public yeah. places. Because think about it. 
the people that want to take advantage of you don't have time to do all this shit. Yeah, you don't have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, the question from EST is the safest way to pick up girls. Um, it's just doing activities, doing what you like to do and surrounding yourself with people that have common interests. Yeah. And in like a safe setting. Right. Like, yeah. for example, if, um, I just uh, there's a craft store, believe it or not. I like my mom. For my whole life, she's a handcraft. She's got her own YouTube channel. She was monetized Your mom has a me. YouTube? Yeah. She's had a YouTube channel for like three years now. Oh, and wow. she does handcrafts and stuff <laughs> okay. on it. So it's um, all in the family. Yeah, and I like that kind of stuff. So I go to the craft store um, uh, uh, over, where is it? That way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, in Manila, and it's called Bombay. It's like a big one. And they have like workshops there. And I enrolled to go learn how to crochet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, but guess what? I'm going to be surrounded by like 100 women in there. When Absolutely. Doing that. Like, Absolutely. It'll, it'll be closer to 50. But yeah. But it, I didn't enroll just because I want to meet women because mm -hmm. I've got a girlfriend. But I'm saying that... Those if you wanted doing, to, you could meet them. Doing then, things... Yeah. yeah. If you want to meet people, and whether it's for romantic interest or just meeting people down here, yeah. do activities. If you're here for a limited time, if you're here for a week... You're probably not going to no. meet, you know, have yeah. profound, you know, relationships. <laughs> I think we need to remove the word, word hookup as well. I think yeah. that's when people get it, in it, trouble. It, yeah, because hooking the, up with someone it implies fast movement to get them in their house and yeah. bang them. That's yeah. not going to end well. Maybe if you start with like, what's the best way to meet a nice woman? Yeah, and it's more about meeting and getting to know them. Then you have a lot more success. Right, and you yeah. won't seem as desperate. They won't take advantage of it, and you also seem more attractive. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everywhere I've gone, I've been, you know, to Mexico and um, at different parts of Colombia as well. Um, meeting women is not a problem, you know, m meeting Yeah, but you're people. a well-spoken guy. You know how to carry conversations. Yeah. You're respectful to people. You're not just trying to bang them as soon as you yeah. talk to them. <laughs> yeah, people, but but that's what the biggest advice, the, be the best relationship advice that I've ever gotten, and I give this to my friends who ever ask, they ask me, how you know, how can I pick up women? I'm like, First thing you got to do is work on yourself. Yeah. Like if you work on yourself, you go to the gym, read books, uh, get become interested in something. Um, for example, like I literally play the guitar. I play video games and stream video games. I've got a channel on YouTube and I stream on YouTube uh, on this channel. I've got three different businesses. I've got Airbnb properties. I've got a digital marketing business. I do the Medellin Masterclass. Um, we've got a real estate mastermind that we're doing once a month. I play basketball. Uh, I I go to the gym. Uh, like literally, That's I could list things. off. Like I could probably list off twenty things that I do that make me interesting. So when I meet you, someone, do arts and crafts. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting into arts and crafts. Like what the fuck? <laughs> like so when I meet somebody and I tell them this, they're like, well, first of all, they're like, how do you have the time to do all this? Yeah. And second, they they're like, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Like I wish I could do that. Yeah. I'm like, well, why don't you? You. Even if you have a nine to five job, you can still do a lot of you things. Yeah, time. So yeah. yeah, it just depends how much you want it. Yeah, it depends yeah. on how much you want. Often it. the the hardest paths are the most um, you know valuable. <laughs> <laughs> but Thin Line Media says uh, these are specific targeted crimes at all types of tourists, which are not comparable to other countries. Well, first of all, it's not all types of tourists. The family that comes here. And goes to you know Parque RV yeah. and has a couple of nice dinners and go home are not, are not the targets. <laughs> so you're completely wrong there. No, first of yeah. all, it's a specific type of tourist, which is a sex tourist that are get, being targeted by gangs that use women to lure them and drug them and rob them and clean their bank accounts. <laughs> Fact. Yeah, that's uh, that's literally the out of the what thirty. Three people that I have think it's died. almost forty now. Yeah, but yeah. Probably all the people that have died here. Yeah. that have been killed. I would say if I were to put a stat on it, what like ninety percent of them yeah. are that type of that are, are that that's their the, the prototype, right? Correct. Uh, right. So yeah. so if you fit that bill, then you are at risk in Medellin. That's absolutely, absolutely true. And uh, throw in there a couple that weren't that prototype. I, I know that there was a guy from Southern California, an Asian dude, not the recent dude, but somebody else um, who was a grad from uh, I think it was like Cal State Fullerton. He had come down here. Um, just as a tourist yeah. meet, and he met a girl on Tinder and got drugged and robbed and died. Um, and he, he met this girl on Tinder, but it wasn't like a prostitute. It no, wasn't like he was just trying to normal, pay her. Yeah. Um, and, um, and it was just a normal date. He thought, yeah. he thought it was a normal date, but I would beg to wonder, and I, I hate to ask this question, um, 
for, uh, or I would hate for people to think that I'm trying to put blame on him, but I, I would w- wonder because that girl was keen to come to his apartment, right? Like, and have drinks with him. No, this like, was a different. I think he actually met her. They went for outside, a drink. Out, they went they for went a, back. and then they went. Then she's then. I think the story was she's like something happened, a conversation, and then a tax, uh, one of her, she invited some friends in the car to pull up and he got in the car and then they took him. Yeah. So maybe she said, come to my place for yeah. a party or something. I'm right. not sure. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's sketchy, man. Like for, first time in a country and this girl likes you so much that she wants to take you back to her house yeah. or, to, yeah. or to her friend's house in her that's why it's just car. not good. They put, like, that's why I would from, ask, like, yeah. would that happen to you normally in Southern California? Has that ever happened to you in your life? <laughs> Where you go on a date and a girl's like, oh, you're so great. Let's go back to my place. I like, was talking to me mate the other day and he's been here eight years as well. And I say, hey, man, you know how many times in Australia a girl has messaged me on Tinder and said, hey, you're so good looking. Me and my friend want to come over to your place. <laughs> zero. <laughs> you know how many times it will ever happen to me anywhere in the world? Apart from Medellin, zero. Yeah. It's, 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 if it's it, too good to be true yeah it's probably it's always yeah. true yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so yeah so the tourists aren't being targeted it's the specific type of tourist that's being targeted and unfortunately getting killed out here which is terrible because yeah. again like I said before that type of tourism exists here because the government allows it yeah. to exist here the yeah. Colombian people allow it to exist here and the consequences now are that these people are taking advantage of that type of tourism the sex tourism yeah and r- robbing these people. So imagine if close to 40 have been killed, how many have been drugged this year? That's oh, a crazy damn, amount. a lot, yeah. I would venture to say like hundreds. Hundreds, hundreds right. yeah. Hundreds of people hundreds. probably have been, and, and when I say people, I mean sex tourists. Yeah. Um, and, and throwing in the non-sex tourists there as well, but just because they didn't know any better. They don't watch channels like ours or DC Born Rob or anybody like that but, where they were warned. But... I was talking about this before. I think that there's t- two types of people. Mm. One that generally doesn't know. Yeah. I don't know how you cannot know because there's so many videos about it. Basically, every video on YouTube is about Yeah, this. like if you do any, any research, search, you'll know you'll, that this is You'll a problem. have that at the back of your mind. But there's the other type of person, and we have a story about someone like this. There's someone that we actually did a consult with. He paid us good money to meet up with him. <laughs> we met up with him. We had lunch with him. He said, hey, I want to date some girls. What do I do? What do I don't do? Oh, and you fine. told him. Yeah. Tell me what you told him. I told him, stay off the dating apps, meet people naturally, don't do any of the prostitution pay-for-play stuff. Um, you're a good-looking guy, you speak both languages yeah. really well, and um, you can just go about doing activities. You like to go hiking, get in the hiking group right now and go do that. Um, you like to uh, box, get a, go to the yeah. boxing gym, get a trainer, do stuff like you would do normally in the United States, you're going to meet people. Yeah, here. so... You- the first thing, the main point is that you told him, stay off dating stay apps and don't him. invite women to your place because of drugged and robbed many people yeah. dying. And you, this was like beginning of the year. You told him when nobody specifically was, yeah. with no ambiguity yep. what happened to him three days later. <laughs> he got drugged and robbed. <laughs> We're not laughing at you if you're watching this. And he got robbed of We're how la- much? Oh, I forget, man. What, what was you it? said it was 50 grand 50, in, in oh, crypto. 50, 50 grand, grand crypto. crypto. So this was a guy that did a co- consultation with us and I met him personally yeah. and told him not to do this shit. And then like, this was like a month ago or <laughs> yeah, about a month ago, he writes me, Hey, I bought my apartment and then we go and I got drugged and robbed. I'm like, Oh my God, bro. He's like, yep. There was every story that's online. That was me. Yeah. Like this girl met her on Tinder. She was keen to come back to my apartment. I'm like, did it again, chap. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the point I'm trying to make. One type of person generally somehow doesn't know yeah. about this at all. And the other type of person, they know well and good that this shit is happening. But they see a they pretty girl and they're like, it. let's go. They it's don't care. It's not going to happen to me. No. But, but that's like the famous last words. T-Max says, I have some attractive employees. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> or so do we. <laughs> um, uh, wait, wait. Well, I didn't read the rest of that. And friends, but I refuse to introduce them to my friends from the U.S. I don't want them messing up my friendship network in Colombia. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> um, Warren Kenner says, a lot of you guys going abroad, a lot of the guys going abroad for love are rebelling against the six foot, six pack, six figure. Six foot, six, six foot pack, six. Uh Six-pack, six-figure requirements that lots of women say they have in the U.S. They're trying to get away from their superficiality. 
Um, yeah, I, I get that. I don't agree with that, meaning that I don't agree with the guys that are just um, writing off women from from the U.S. completely. I mean, I like the U.S. The... has half a billion people in it, yeah. and let's say 50% of them are women. That's 250 million people, women, and let's say the dating pool. Let's say it's 100 million people. You're, you're generalizing 100 million women for what you see on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and maybe even in person from some of the women out there. I can't believe like that. I mean, I, I don't live in the United States, haven't been there for 13 years, but I dated my whole life there. Um, and most of them were all just American girls. I was there just before I came here. Yeah. Fine. And I never had a problem no, no. Like, with this, with this um, so-called problem. I think the problem is usually within. It's like you know, that. Uh, my mom used to say that when you when you're pointing at so when you're pointing your finger at someone, you have three pointing right back at you. <laughs> it's like uh, usually you're the problem. And, uh -huh. uh, and when I see a lot of these channels, where, uh, you know, like the passport bro type channels, um, a lot of them are good and they have good information and they're le actually traveling for great reasons and stuff like that. But some of them, it's like. What do you have to offer? Yeah. You know, like that yeah, you don't have the six figures, you're not six foot six and you're not a baller and you're whatever. But what do you have? Like what 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 are your interests? What can you offer someone, not even in a romantic relationship? Why would I even want to be your friend? It's exactly what you said before. It's like you have all these things, like twenty interests that you do that yeah. make you an interesting person, right? Yeah. Some and I do them because I generally like yeah. to do them. Well, some people have zero interest just sitting at home staring at the wall. Yeah, um, and then expect to go get and laid. And then expect, <laughs> then expect like Mila Kunis to be falling at their feet. Oh, my God. Like, why would that happen? True, like, some people true. just lack logic and realistic yeah. goals, I guess. I think the best thing is to work on yourself. Like, yeah. And that's what I do. I, I can't constantly do stuff to work on myself, to learn something new. To have fun in life. Yeah. Like but I, we don't even do it for girls. We just do it because it's I fun. It, man, I like to do all yeah, this stuff. Though, yeah. Man. I love to do <laughs> stuff. Like, yeah, I meet so many people just by doing the things that I do that I want to learn. I mean, I can't believe I got, I'm going to go do crochet next Friday and it's <laughs> going to be cool. Yeah. It's probably going to be a bunch of grandmas, but I genuinely want to learn. <laughs> yeah. Why it's not? It's like a skill that it's my mom great, has. Yeah. And I'm like, my my do girlfriend it. does whatever you're doing. Yeah. That's She's, fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Like, I love it. Uh, one of the best, uh, I met a beautiful girl what, like four years ago um, uh, doing painting classes here. Okay. Like watercolor. Oh, watercolor I got to learn that. Yeah. Mon yeah. There's a, there's a place here in Manila. Yeah. That's like a studio. Okay. And they do classes. They teach you? Watercolor, acrylic. Oh, so I, I learned it. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I suck, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't keep up with it. I was like, I bought the easel, I bought the things and I got all the paints. I still got them there. Yeah. But I never kept up with it. And I'm a pretty good artist when it comes to drawing by hand. Not when it comes to writing no, in no, English. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have a broken hand. <laughs> Oh, that's true. That, that'll, that'll do it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, but yeah, I met this beautiful girl just while we were painting. And there's another, so I've done a few of these and they're super fun. Um, there's a few restaurants and also workshops out here that do painting and wine nights. Oh. So like you, you get cups of wine or glasses of wine while you paint and you learn how to paint a certain thing. And it's usually like a still life. Does your painting skill get better or worse when you get smashed? I think there's a bell curve. It's, <laughs> okay. like, a curve. it's like speaking Spanish. Did you guys know that someone who runs Gringo Tuesdays, which is actually the um, language exchange that happens here in Provence every Tuesday night, he told me there's a fact. I have not checked this fact, but he told me that <laughs> the perfect point is if you have two beers, your level of speaking a second language improves substantially, but only two. If you yes. have three, goes down. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that happening because I speak Spanish fluently, but if I have more than three drinks, it starts getting worse. Yeah, but if you get two, it gives you a bit more confidence yeah. so you're not so inside right. your shell. Yeah. yeah, but if I have 10 shots of tequila, I'll be speaking Chinese. You'll be speaking in <laughs> tongues. <laughs> uh, that sounds hype. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do painting and wine. Yeah, they have painting and wine. Um, there's another one by the most beautiful girl. Oh, my God. I'm married. I'm, not, I'm, I'm married. married. I've you're got married. a girlfriend. I've got a girlfriend. We're going to have a kid. But there's this beautiful woman that owns a bakery here. Um, she's gorgeous. And they do, they do, um, fuck, what do they call it? They call it like shake and bake or something like. Okay. Um, where What's where, shaking and what's where, baking? They, they, Dancing? It, it's a workshop because it's a bakery yeah. on how to bake little cakes. Okay. And she has like every person that goes there, it's like the meat, meat and cake or meat, meat and bake. That's what they call okay. it. Something like that. Like and networking and, and no, baking? No, no, it's for like people that want to learn how to bake. Okay. Like, and she'll, teach them how to do a certain type of baking that day in the workshop 
and it's usually a hundred percent women. Okay. Um, and they're all Pisces. Yeah. Because like no, no, no guy corners. usually wants to do baking yeah. or crocheting well, I, well, or. I don't want to. You've do got the inside. Uh, I mean, you do these things just yeah, because. Yeah, look it up. It's called Biella Bakery. Uh -huh. Biella Bakery. Okay. And Maria, she. Psh, yeah. Just look it up. You got some Trust good. Me. You're good gonna love it. You got some good tips right now. I I want to do the painting as well. That sounds good. I, yeah, I want to. Yeah. Uh, the the painting's always fun. Even if you're not a painter, it's always fun. And if you go with friends, it's even funnier because you're laughing at each other's skill level. Yeah. And then you'll be surprised. Like I used to do this when we had an office and we had a, so all of these things I learned about because I had an office and I had employees here before the pandemic, and we would do yoga like uh, yoga month like every Friday. Uh, during lunch hour, uh, like the company would pay for yoga day, we'd have we'd go to the yoga studio, we'd go to the painting studio and do that. Yeah, um, we did a few things like that, which was super fun. We learned how to do sushi in the office. That's the a, guy came into the office. These with people got stuff. application forms to work for. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty good. <laughs> it was awesome. It was super fun. Um, but. Um, but yeah, I learned about all these activities. EST, do I need to pregame the meat and bake? <laughs> <laughs> Just rolling up half cut. Yeah, the, yeah, Yo, what we baking today, bitches? <laughs> <laughs> and does pregame mean that you're like baking something at home? Or Isn't drinking? pregame is drinking, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I got to get my baking skills up. Got to impress some people. Should we get back on track? Uh, uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Can you bring up the list of our yeah, so steps to moving it's to Medellin? We, we went through basically our whole list. Okay. Oh, gosh. I moved our yeah, camera. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. have, so this was meeting people. Actually, we were yeah. actually stayed on track because we talked about dating. We talked about painting and baking. That's all about meeting people. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That is uh, about meeting people and, and doing stuff out here. And it's something that you could start doing without having to be here. If you're in the United States, you could start making connections with people down here. Real people that are not on Tinder or Bumble. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're on those apps, you can meet some real people, but... Uh, unless if you're like extremely good looking, you're not going to be getting a whole bunch of requests or likes or whatever. Yeah. But if you have a general interest with people, they'll start talking to you about that, even if you're not here in those WhatsApp groups and Facebook, etc. Instagram is a great resource yeah. as well. Um, wait, we have a question. Someone, where did I? Oh, is 678 Korean barbecue worth visiting? I've never been, but I heard it's really good. Uh, again, we're vegan. What are we? <laughs> we're gonna go go grill up. Yeah, I've, uh, I've never a had. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, I've never had Korean barbecue in my life, but I've heard it's delicious. Yeah. yeah, a couple of drinks also helps in dancing. That's true. Yes, it does. That's true. Yeah. Not that I've done it. That's true. Yeah. Okay. You haven't done. I don't drink. Yeah, but when did you stop drinking? Oh no, but dancing. I, sorry, I was thinking it means like salsa, where it's like the steps. Oh yeah. I'm not sure about that, but just shaking uncontrollably in a nightclub. <laughs> I've done that. that. Is that you dancing? That's my dancing. Yeah, that was me going. At eight. Please don't drink and dance. <laughs> <laughs> the years of 18 to 23 was all about drinking and, and shaking, shaking uncontrollably. uncontrollably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Drinking helps for a lot of things but when you overdo it then it doesn't help <laughs> oh yeah absolutely like many things in life yeah <laughs> um what do we do after connecting with people andrew in terms of moving to medellin for anyone that's jumping in a bit later mm -hmm. and they're wondering what the hell is going on with this video because we're talking about hella random shit right now to so this video is all about the steps you need to put in place to move to medellin right yeah and uh number one have your budget ready yeah figure out uh do i need some savings when I go down there, how what's much do I? What's situation? my monthly situation? How much do I need per month? Okay. Exactly. And the next one was which neighborhood am I going to live in? Yeah. All the neighborhoods here are very different, different vibe, different people, different interests. So right. figure out where you want to stay and then come here. Right. Yeah. The next one is start looking for apartments. Right. Yeah. Stay in Airbnb when you first come here. That's the safest and most trustworthy way. Right. After that, you can look into more of the local ways of getting an apartment at yeah. 30, 50 percent much cheaper. Right. Uh, after that. But this is actually can be at the start. Learn some Spanish. You go, you're going to go. Your experience is going to be a thousand times better if you can actually communicate with the yeah. locals. So learn some Spanish. Start now. Apps, um, tutors, online, Zoom, whatever it takes. Yep. Just learn a little bit to get by, and you'll improve when you get here yeah. because you'll be talking to people all, yeah, the time. all the time. Then next, once you've stayed here for the. 180 days maximum in a year uh, hopefully organize this maybe a little bit before you're getting kicked out but you want to stay longer you've fallen in love with the city uh, with the country you want to stay longer you need to organize your visa there's yeah. a list of visa options from everything from a year if you just want to test it out for another year or you can do some uh, the migrant visas right. which allow you to uh, accumulate towards residency if you really want to live here yeah. long term uh, and then Finally, uh, what you want to do is connecting with people, either that social, professional. Um, there's many, many groups here that you can join. Yep. You can do that through WhatsApp and Facebook groups before you even come here. And that's ultimately 
what's really going to make your experience that much better by yeah. understanding the culture meeting the locals making friends here because uh you know home is where the people that you connect with are right yeah and those are basically our top tips for moving to colombia in medellin in 2024 and you can get started now you don't have to be here to do all this stuff you could do all of this stuff from where you are you don't have to be in the country to start getting organized if your dream is to come down and live here long term that's where it's got to start. You got to start by planning it and then executing and really investing not, right now would be your time and or investing in a course like ours, like the Medellin Masterclass. I don't know. There's a couple other courses. Just investing in yourself is a great way to, yeah. to, to get you pushed, right? To get you moving like fire under that but right like if well, you there's put a study money somewhere that's is. like yeah usually if you pay for something you're like 10 times more likely to actually follow through because you've yeah. invested some cost sense, yeah. Right? yeah yeah i'm the same way if i yeah. pay for something i'm going to use it and i'm going to try to do it right yeah uh so that makes sense yeah so that was the topic for today guys uh don't forget to smash that like we, button we have and a, the subscribe button. yeah like and subscribe we also have an announcement we have an announcement. We have. It's a bit of a secretive announcement. Yeah, I, it's so secret that I forgot <laughs> what it was. He doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> so secret, I don't even know. <laughs> so uh, we have a special for our Medellin Masterclass this month, but it's a secret special because we actually want to only special. offer it to people that we think are going to be a great part of our community. So if yeah. you don't know about our community, uh, maybe we haven't advertised it that well, but you take the Masterclass and then you interview with us. If we get along with you and think you're going to be a good fit for the community, we invite you to our WhatsApp group there we do zoom calls every single month for some people who might not be in the country you talk to all the other 15 plus members all entrepreneurs professionals business owners investors right. you talk to all of us every month plus we meet up twice a month right so what we want to do is interview you you can uh, book a book a call with us free yeah. call the link is in the description below yeah. 15 minutes we talk to you and say hey this guy or girl going to be a good fit with us and uh, if so then we give you our special discount yeah so it's kind of a uh, a secret discount because again we don't want to just include anybody that pays to get into the master class yeah. we want to interview everybody and i know it might sound kind of backwards like uh, a lot of people would be like well why don't you just want the most amount of people that are going to pay 1500 bucks or uh, you know five thousand bucks to be in the elite program etc yeah um well th for us it doesn't work that way it, we we would rather make and uh, make good money but also build a community that's going to make us even more money in the future. Uh -huh. Meaning that, for example, um, everybody that's in the master class right now, we've learned something from them. Even though they they joined to learn from us on how to move to Medellin and they've made that jump and they're living here now, we've learned just as much from them because one of them does digital marketing through paid ads. He's the person that's been He's taught crucial. us everything. Of all the big help, yeah. big help. Shout out. So one of them uh, does uh, yeah. email um, sequences. Email mar marketing. Another one does another, investing. Uh, yeah, another guy has bought 1,200 units in the United States yeah. of property. And, yeah, and we have T-Mac in the chat. He's a fucking rocket scientist. A, literally a rocket scientist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and part of the uh, black... Bill, black Bitcoin. billionaires yeah. club or something yeah Bill black bitcoin black billionaire. billionaires yeah that's uh, like, that's something like that yeah. Uh, that's uh, yeah we knowing those type of people and having those people in the community are worth more than any amount of money that mm -hmm. you can actually make you know from the course that they purchase so yeah. for us it's super important to actually meet the people that are in the master class we want to uh, nurture this community so that we can all grow together. Yeah. And live this is a long term life. play as well, because we're in, in maybe play. a year or two years. We want to have these huge events, 100 people and all high level people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, before we go, we'll do a real quick fire question. Round. Yeah. Question Lightning run. Round. We've got is Pedro Negro worth the hype? Um, it's pretty crowded, dingy, and it's a basement. But yeah, it's fun. But again, it's more fun with friends than going there alone. You'll probably be bored if you go there by yourself. Go with friends. <laughs> uh, Kev asks, is dance free still around on Calle Diaz? Yes, it is. And they also do a language exchange. I believe it's on Wednesday. They do language exchange, dance classes, and then dance party on Wednesday nights or Thursday nights. I forget which night it is, but it's super fun. I've been. It's awesome. Uh, East says, it's a great live stream. Thank you, East. Thanks, EST. Uh, Unknown says, how long can I stay before I have to pay taxes, 183 days um, every year, not calendar year, 183 days every 365 days. Yeah. Uh, how long can I stay before I have to pay taxes? I just, that's just, I just, are you not <laughs> oh, listening? No, because he said something else. <laughs> okay. I still have an official job, so taxes are a big no. Um, and then 
Thin Line Media said, you don't have to pay taxes if you pay them in another country, you, but you might need to report them. Yeah, if you st overstay the 182 days, you have to report. But again, working with a tax professional is the best thing that you can do to figure out how you can avoid double taxation, yeah. which shouldn't be happening. EST said, how big is the masterclass community? I think last time I checked, it's 17 people 17 now. 17 people. 17, and in two months? We yeah, two, yeah months, two months. Two yeah. months, it's grown to 17 people. Our goal is to get 100 people for 2024. Yeah. So we we'll also a, might be more than that because we have some other people who have bought our lower lower course, yeah. like the Essentials Introductory course. Yeah. That one doesn't get you masterclass access. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 17, but a few yeah, more people. 17 yeah. people, yeah. Um, you guys are hilarious together. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Glenn. You're yeah, awesome. Thanks, Glenn. You're awesome. Free group Zoom call at some point. Ooh, a free, a free Zoom call. That, that could be interesting. How do we do that? We have to send emails to everybody? Or yeah, like anybody that wants to join okay. a free Medellin Masterclass Zoom call okay. for an hour where we basically go over questions and answers live with people. Yep. And we could stream that as okay. well so that people on the stream that couldn't make the Zoom call could still get their questions answered or if they have the same questions, would get those answers. How's that different to what we're doing now? Uh, because we would be taking um, calls. We'd be on a uh, live call okay. with, let's say, 20 other people. Oh, we can see their faces and, and stuff. And they could see us and oh, we could see them okay. and they would have questions for okay. us. That's and interesting. We would be yeah, we them. could try that. I think that would be fun. Yeah. I'd have to figure out how to... Yeah, I'll leave that up stream. to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, barely can get this stream up today. <laughs> That's what I said. Leave it up to you. <laughs> Eric, thank you for the two ninety nine on eight K's channel. Yeah, Let's thanks, go. Eric, with the teddy bear. <laughs> um, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Every little thing helps. Uh, Julian um, Hurtado, how much is the master class? We have three different levels. Yes, we have four different we have levels. Four, many four different levels. levels. Yeah. So we have the master class, which is the essentials, which is the unadvertised, because we just made this in response to some people saying it's too expensive. We still wanted to help you, but we have a kind of a cut down offer, which just teaches you the essentials about learning Spanish, getting a place to rent at a cheap price, um, what to look out for, where to go, what to do, which is $500. Yeah. Uh, we have the masterclass, flagship masterclass, the main one, the classic. which is $1,500. Yeah. And that's basically teaches you everything over 21 modules. Yeah. Plus you join our masterclass community, which is in my mind, I've earned already more than 1500 bucks from just the information I got from everybody yeah, else. Yeah, and um, on top of that, you also get all of our contacts. So each yes. module in the masterclass has, um, or most of the modules, or the important modules where you need contacts, like a real estate attorney, a tax attorney, an accountant, uh, a, a personal assistant, um, a cleaning lady, a cook, a driver. Um, we've got a slew of things that we talk about, or modules, and in those modules attached, we have the spreadsheets with all of our contacts, all of our vetted professionals that work here, like real estate agents. Mm -hmm. I think we're up to like 20 real estate agents on there. Most that speak English as yeah. well. That are fluent. So if you want to rent a place, you can just go on there. We have yeah, both the best rental agents and yeah, and yeah. But for agents. many people watching that we've talked about that start renting a place can be difficult. Yeah, you can go on. And immediately have a list of people you can contact, yeah, speak like you English, and you say, yeah. I want to rent a place, and then they help you out, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so that one, that we That's have that one. Classic. That's a classic. Then we have the elite for the elite. people like uh, Raj, who we just yeah. completed and got him an apartment in two weeks. These are people who, um, rather than just learn and, and do it themselves, it. Yeah. they just, you guys do it. I just want to come and enjoy Medellin. Sort yeah. everything out for me. He still had to do some work, but yeah. like signing papers, looking at properties. Yeah, and yeah. So there's still yeah, stuff yeah. that he does. Yeah. Um, but the hard stuff, like the, the heavy we lifting, do the we stuff. do all the heavy yeah. lifting. For example, he said, I want this. And then we gave him a spreadsheet of like 20 different options over four different agents and said, what do you think? Yeah. So that yep. stuff takes time for people who have more money than time. Yeah. Then yeah. do that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, EST says, then you have everyone in your email newsletter too. Would probably grow a lot. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's uh, I would definitely show up. Yeah. So it is a good idea. I think it is a good idea. Eric says, miss uh, that Columbia podcast with episodes with uh, Lita. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have Lita on my, on, on my channel in like a couple of weeks. Who's um, Lita? Lita. She's a Venezuelan um, designer. Uh, she does uh, clothing. She's okay. got her own brand. Um, and she's super funny. What's she going to be talking about? Uh, about establishing a business in Medellin okay. and her brand and living as a foreigner, but a, but a different type of foreigner, which is a Venezuelan. Yeah. Uh, basically, they are kind of like refugees or sure, definitely. Yeah. Um, from their country uh -huh. and living here full time. Yeah. And 
starting her company. So okay. I think it's going to be interesting. Let's. It's eight fifty two yes, right now. Is. Let's go to nine. So guys, unleash your questions yeah. upon us. Just a couple more because minutes. Because you have not eight more minutes for this whole year to to get your questions answered. Until then, you got to wait till next year. Uh, well, not for my people on my channel. <laughs> Just wait till next week. Yeah, yeah. For me, I'm going on Monday. I'm in Bolivia. I'm going to be somewhere in the salt flats with no phone, the no internet, flats. nothing. Just hanging out with flamingos. Really, I'm going to go that see flamingos amazing. and some lakes. I'll be doing that eventually. But yeah, right now I can't. I can't leave this office. I got a baby on the way. My baby need new <laughs> shoes. I gotta get more passive income. Um, Juliano Hurtado, I'm not, uh, I'm sure you guys give ideas. Um, about, uh, he says, I'm sure you guys give ideas of remote jobs mm -hmm. or create a community, help figure it out. Remote jobs uh, comes with the masterclass. No, uh, no, no, we don't. We don't have a module on. So everybody that buys the masterclass or, or purchases and becomes a student are people that are already that have been to Medellin before. They've got their money situated where they can work remote or they can work half the, t the year there and then live half the year here and do something else. So they've got all that figured out. But that being said, AK has a bunch of uh, videos on his channel. Yeah, I have a lot of videos. Where yeah. he goes over uh, remote job opportunities and ideas. Yeah. And on top of that, maybe I'll just form another channel where I'll, you know, how to find a job online and how, what to, what you can do. Yeah. And really the best uh, tip that I can give for anybody is basically go look at what is out there, what kind of platforms are out there for remote work, for example, like Upwork, where you could be a freelancer. And if you've never been a freelancer, you've been an employee your whole life, I know that that could be a tough transition. Start learning on how to become a, a freelancer. And a lot of the time... It involves you doing free shit for people. We all did it. I did it yeah. for free. Yeah. And like doing free stuff yeah. just to get your foot in the door or at a very discounted rate. But doing free stuff is not so painful here because it's so cheap to live, right? Yeah. The rent, when I was doing free um, a camera work and video work just to craft my skill and get better and have some portfolio work, which in turn I used to sell for thousands of dollars, right? To, right. To, um, I was living in a place here for just $500 in a room. I didn't even have my own place. Yeah. So I just cut costs and just boom, 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 boom. Studied yeah. everything about YouTube, video production, blah, yeah. blah, blah. But you have to do it. Yeah. And if you're in the United States and you have a regular nine to five job, it might mean that you have to do it on the side after yeah. work, Yeah. you know, doing all this stuff. One thing I'll say to Julian, uh, Julian, I just released a video. I think it's maybe just a week ago. The video is titled, you'll find it on my channel. Um, it's called How to Get a Remote Job and Move to Columbia. Oh, nice. It's nice. 18 minutes and it gives you everything you need to know. Watch nice. that. You'll be happy. Okay. Yep. Um, but then you have to do work. Okay. It's yeah, not just yeah. you watch the video and money's going to appear <laughs> in your coming. bank account. Um, I wish that's how it worked. Hey, but no. Eric, with another $499. Don't know. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. You're legend. Um, I'm going to get to Eric's question in one second. Sure. Um, Beast LFC said, hola. No, actually, sorry. Thin Line Media said, so if I only want to rent a place, I need to pay one and a half grand. No, uh, a rental, rent like a local module is included in the 497, yeah, um, 497. Masterclass Essentials, it's called. Yeah. Um, next question. Beast LFC, hola. For your Masterclass, do you guys have a business group in Medellin so everyone can connect, network, and help each other? Yeah, I'll let you answer that. Uh, could, could you repeat it? He said, do we have a business networking group which comes as part of our masterclass? Ah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the best part uh, of it. Yeah, basically the masterclass is a business networking <laughs> group. Uh, so part our, our, our WhatsApp group is made up of all the students that are in the masterclass uh, from the masterclass classic and above. So, um, and all of those people are either entrepreneurs, doctors. We've got a couple doctors. Rocket scientists. A rocket scientist <laughs> now with TMAC, who's amazing. A, a, seven, a guy who runs a seven, seven or eight figure Facebook ads uh, agency. Agency. Uh, a CEO coach. Yes. He coaches CEO. In the US. He in coaches the US. Yeah. Um, what else we got in there? Oh, Raj, the professional. <laughs> we forgot investor. about him, yeah, who has invested in 1,300 apartments. Uh, yeah. Something uh, like that was that, yeah. bought and sold and currently owns two apartment buildings. Yeah. In, in Hawaii. Hawaii yeah. yeah. Um, so the, all of that is business networking. And then we do in-person meetups. For example, our, one of our monthly meetups is a real estate mastermind here where you meet other people that own property out here. Uh, we have a guest speaker and we ask them questions and we record that too and we make a video out yeah, of it. Yeah, I but, just released the first episode on yeah, my channel two days ago. With I think. Rick. Yeah, yeah the, the interview with Rick, that was at our real estate mastermind where um, it's basically networking, everybody talking about real estate and their life here in Medellin. Uh, so yes, to answer your question, 
There is. Basically, is included. <laughs> if you join this group, somewhere down the line, you will make more money. Somewhere along, yeah, you'll learn something more money. Just by noting these contacts, right? Yeah, it's uh, what? You are the average of all your five five friends? Five people. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Beast LFC, hola, for your master class, do you guys have a... Oh, sorry, just... (laughs) (laughs) There's an echo. Yeah, I thought you (laughs) echo-proofed this room, bro. Um, uh, uh, (laughs) Mollywood says, I'm going to Cartagena for the first time in three weeks. Let's go. That sounds like a really... uh, Cartagena can be really fun. I I love visiting and, and vacationing in Cartagena. Especially for events, like watching their, their soccer team play or uh, going for concerts out there are super fun as well. Uh, going to the island hop, you know, doing island hopping out there is super fun. Eric, we were going to read his oh, question. Sorry. Eric, with a $5 donation. Thank you, my man. I'm very generous. Yeah. He said, your recommendations for best hotels in Manila, El Poblado, three to four stars, please. Three to four stars. I would say Nomada. Nomada. Oh, uh, that's next to Ihamia. Yeah, that's mm. right. Above. Uh, Ihamia is in Nomada. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's like the, the word nomad, but in Spanish, Nomada. Um, that's probably, uh, and then there's another one called Hotel Manila. Hotel Manila is really nice too. That's like a four star, three star, four star. How much do these places cost? I don't month? know what the they, the 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 room rates there are, yeah. but I mean it's pretty easy to find. Um, and then also, if you want something that's more like a hostel vibe, where they have like a rooftop and like a rooftop bar and um, you know like events happening and stuff, I highly recommend uh, El Viajero, El yeah. Viajero Hostel, Masaya too, uh, Masaya, but that's in Astorga. Uh, oh, it's close el, enough. El Viajero. <laughs> yeah. El yeah. Viajero is in Manila and mm-hmm. also Los Patios. Oh, that's a nice one. In, they go uh, to Los Patios in Laureles now. You yeah, know that? Yeah. I saw the other. I was like, what the uh, hell yeah, is I this? <laughs> and, and, but it's like a... It's a, it's, a, it's like co-living or something. Oh, so gotcha. it's like actual suites. So more long-term yeah, people. Yeah, it's more... Oh, cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, um, yeah so guys... Yeah, we good really fun today. Great video. you guys being here for all of you guys that stuck it to the end. And if you're watching the replay, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Yeah. And share it with your friends and family. And uh, thanks for all the support this year on both our channels. Yeah, you guys are uh, Thanks for coming, commenting, liking viewing and just uh, sharing some time with us yeah. and listening to us talk. Yeah. <laughs> when I started the YouTube channel myself like three months ago, I kind of was apprehensive just because I know how many people troll. But I've been so surprised at the opposite has happened, right? Where we have so many supportive people, people that love the channel, people that give us great tips as well because, yeah. you know, c- criticism it can be constructive. Um, so I really appreciate you guys. I hope you guys, if you guys, if I don't see you guys here in Medellin this year, I hope you guys have a great year. Yeah. Or, or a great end of your end year. End of the year. And hopefully Merry Christmas see you in, in, in three days, right? Yes. Now let's go watch some boxing. <laughs> oh. The boxing. Nice. Yeah. Thank tonight. you guys for watching. See you 